You see, retreats like this are times of feasting on the mysteries of the kingdom. Feasting on the mysteries of the kingdom. You can be zealous in times of dissipating spiritual energy. But whether or not you are making impact in the realm of the spirit is dependent on the quality of the insight that guides your prayer. It's not just the zeal and the will to pray, but the insight that guides the prayer. Otherwise, there are many prayer warriors on earth whose lives should bring forth a level and an extent of Christian experience that should defy argument. So it's not just in the dissipating of energy, but the quality of the insight. Are we together now? So every time the word of God is coming, it's an opportunity for you to receive. The word of God, Satan has never been afraid of the word of God. No. Satan is afraid of your understanding of it. The word of God in itself will not do Satan no harm at all. So it is, this is the most, this is the most crucial part of any meeting. When the mysteries are about to come, because the quality of your results will be dependent on what your eyes see, not what you hear. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Please be seated for a while. Jesus, thank you. It's one mystery per day, and the reason why we share it like this is because we want our hearts to be open. My assignment is to guide us on a kingdom truth. When Jesus walked the earth, every time he walked with the disciples, it was an opportunity for him to unfold something about the operation of the kingdom. I struggle very seriously with what I'm about to share because I hope that we will not only appreciate it, but it's something that I pray with all my heart that if you grasp the truth that I show you tonight, it will change your life in a way that will surprise you. If you are with me, say Amen. Tonight I'm sharing on the mystery of strongholds. The mystery of strongholds. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4. The mystery of strongholds. This is a powerful secret of dominion. This is a powerful secret of legislature in the realm of the spirit. The mystery of strongholds. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. And verse 4. 10 and verse 4. When you read from verse 3, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, it says our warfare. Listen carefully. This is Paul speaking now. One who was granted access. Paul called himself a steward of the mystery. He didn't call himself a preacher. Paul didn't call himself. There were people who were called men of God in the Bible. An example, Elijah. An example, Samuel. Paul never called himself a man of God. He called himself a steward of the mystery. One who was given access to the mysteries. That so that when we listen to him, we might be partakers of that fellowship. Called in a participation to come into an understanding of that mystery. And this was one of the mysteries. He said, for though we walk in the flesh, our warfare is not physical. Listen carefully. Our warfare is not physical. And then it says in verse 4, it says for the weapons of our warfare. So warfare is for sure. But he's guiding you on how to engage it. Listen. Living is warfare. Prosperity is warfare. Growth is warfare. But he's giving us the character of this. He's saying the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God.
And the entire arsenal is supposed to achieve one purpose. To pull down, not enemies, strongholds. What kind of warfare is this? That the enemy is not a human being. He never said to pull down spirits. Think about that. He didn't even say to pull down demons. That this warfare, God had to give you the tools to use. And he says this fight is not against flesh and blood. That the fight is not even against demons. Not to pull down demons. To pull down strong. This is warfare now. Next verse. Casting down what? Spirits, demons, Satan, imaginations, the Greek word Yazar, and every high thing, not high person, high thing, high information that exalted itself against the person. Every high thing that exalts itself above another kind of knowledge. This is warfare. That God gave you these tools. Please get what I'm teaching you tonight. That this fight is not against flesh and blood. But that this fight, huh? God gave you these spiritual tools to pull down strongholds, to cast imaginations. To dethrone high things and then to bring thoughts, strongholds, imaginations, high things, thoughts. This is warfare. Now, this is very strange. There is no name of a spirit that is mentioned. Just follow me. There is no name of a demon that is announced here. Shocker, even Satan is not mentioned here. This is Paul teaching us a dimension of warfare that is strange. The mystery of strongholds. Are we together? That a man's bondage is not necessarily the physical things you see. It's not even the spirits that oppress the person. That when a man is ready to establish victory, the focus is not even the spirit entities that are causing these problems, but that there is an operation. Listen, Jesus is teaching us, and this is what he said, that human beings are houses and temples. God said that, demons also say that. Is that true? And the Bible says a spirit can live in a man. Follow me carefully. A spirit can live in a man. And that there is a possibility of casting that spirit out of a man. Is that true? Where does the spirit go to when you cast the spirit? The Bible says it moves around. Dry lands everywhere. Is that true? And then it becomes restless. What makes it restless? Then the Bible says after a while it will turn back. He never said, I will go to the body. He said, I will still go back to my house. Now, question. A spirit is somewhere. No prayer. No prophet. No anointing. Something casted it from there. Back into a human being. That required a man of God to cast it out. What made the spirit uncomfortable with an environment? That it left on its own. Without the particular desire of a man to, to drive it. Think about this. If this guy has a demon spirit and I lay hands on him and cast out the demon spirit, I thought if the demon spirit is somewhere, somebody should be able to drive it back. But the demon says on his own, that environment without any human intervention does something to that demon spirit that makes it restless. The same way a man of God's anointing is driving it. And he starts moving back and saying, it is even better compared to what I am facing here. It is better to go back to that human being. In Matthew chapter 4, you also find that account in Luke chapter 4. Watch this. When Jesus went to fast, I want to tell you certain things 
about strongholds and about this. We are going to pray. But I want, there are things that believers, that's why I told you I struggle to share what I'm sharing. There is a whole series on this that is coming. Jesus, the Bible declares that Jesus is the embodiment of the Godhead. Is that true? And the Bible calls him full of grace and truth. Now Jesus goes to fast. And you mean Jesus is fasting and Satan is waiting for him. Instead of the fasting to drive demons, the fasting was attracting Satan. Listen. <laughs> Satan is not afraid of Jesus. Satan is not even afraid of the fact that Jesus is fasting. This is Jesus being the Son of God alone should command respect. Then fasting for 40 days, no food, no water. Satan is not afraid. Then Satan comes to Jesus, looks at Jesus. Jesus is looking at him back. I thought Satan would be rolling and shouting and moving up and down. Church has never scared Satan. The presence of God has never scared Satan. Listen carefully. <laughs> Just, just take it in first like an injection. Let it enter and settle down. Then we'll continue. In the book of Job, Job chapter 1, the Bible says, Once upon a time the sons of God went to show themselves to the Lord. Is that true? And the Bible says, Satan, at that time he had fallen. Otherwise God would not ask him, Where are you coming from? Is that true? Satan goes before God and he said, where are you coming from? He said, from moving to and fro the earth. What location? The earth. And he says, have you considered my servant Job? And then this is what Satan says, there was something you put around Job. He never said Job's prayer. He never said Job's fasting. I, every time I came to Job, I saw that there was something that surrounded him. That I could not even touch him. It made me uncomfortable. I could not remain with Job. And he said, take that thing away. And watch what, how I will rob his Job. What was Satan's request? It not make me more powerful. Not make Job more powerful. Whatever it is. And this is what Job said. In the days of my youth. When the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle those secrets built a fortification in the realm of the spirit and the bible says satan came not a demon he came by himself whether job was praying or not the fortifications were there he was a man of prayer he was a man of power satan feared job but he stood before god satan feared job but he went before god and stood he said, I couldn't stand before this guy, but I can come to stand before you. It's your Bible. I'm, I'm not reading a, a, a... It's your Bible. Are you getting blessed? And then all of that began to happen. And Job's life went down. And then Job's life came back again. Now watch this. In Luke chapter 4. Let's go back to our text. Give us Luke chapter 4. Jesus just finish praying and fasting. You are praying now, you are fasting. Is that true? In your mind, you believe that this praying and fasting you are doing is supposed to drive out all kinds of demons. There is only a kind that prayer and fasting drives. Says Jesus, our chief mentor and apostle, this kind, this kind, there is a kind because of the nature of their operation that praying and fasting we are fasting together. So listen to what I'm telling you. Now, look at how this verse starts. Please listen. Jesus, comma, being full of the Holy Ghost again, then goes to fast. I mean, he, he returned from Jordan and was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus, the bread of life, the Holy Ghost, number two, fasting added, prayer 40 days. Then let's see what happens. After 40 days he was tempted of the devil. Satan came to tempt Jesus. That word tempt there 
is a very interesting word. Please follow me. And the Bible says, and he was hungry, verse 3. Verse 3. And the devil said, so this is the tempting now. The Bible says, Satan tempted him. And the other verses are explaining the content of the temptation. Are we together? How did Satan tempt Jesus? If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Verse 4. And Jesus answered. Satan talked to Jesus and was not afraid. Jesus, the word, put the word in his lips and was speaking. That word did not cast out Satan. Please listen to me. I want you to be so powerful and to be so free. We have inherited a lot of religion and this is why we keep doing a lot of things and there are no results in our lives. Listen. Listen carefully. He said, Jesus said to him, answered. Satan asked Jesus a question. Jesus is replying back. Remember, this is Jesus and Satan. If there were angels, they would say, this guy is wasting his time somewhere. Satan came directly to Jesus. What makes you think he will not come to you? He went to the throne. He went to the Son. That man shall not live. Jesus said, it is written. Now, this one, we can, we can dwell here forever. Because this is Jesus the Word. And yet he's saying, it is written. He didn't say, I said he went to scripture it is written the bible says all scriptures were inspired by the holy ghost and jesus still said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and that was him standing man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god and jesus is standing and satan is not afraid what was wrong with his confession was it the scripture that was wrong or the person was unholy or the utterance was wrong and satan still stood if you get what i'm teaching you you will know why regardless of what people are doing it looks like satan still remains now listen this is even the fearful part temptation number two satan take him up how did he do it satan Take not the baby Jesus. Jesus who had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Satan told him, come. And he took him into a high mountain. Now this is the fearful part. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Just flash like that. And then here was Satan's proposal. Look how shameless Satan is. We don't know how shameless he is. That's why we think just by standing as I said and live my life and you will leave you. You are joking. You watch what happened between him and Jesus. And the devil said unto him again. This is the living word. This is the logos of God. All this power I will. Please talk to me. What was the power that he would give him? Anointing? What did he call power? The kingdoms, the systems, the governments, he called them power. I will give you. And the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Do you know what Satan was telling Jesus? In heaven you drove me, but this one is my territory. Are we together now? I have influenced the government. I have influenced the system. This one belongs to me. If you ever see anybody rise, I made it happen. And so you better negotiate with me. This is Satan. He's not unaware that this is the living logos. But he tells him, how can I be in a territory and you want to lift somebody and bypass me? He said, look, let me tell you. This is what you are trying to look for. He made it flash before him. And he said, I will give you. He called all of them power. The question is, how did he get it? I used to think he just got it from Adam. Yes, he got the keys from Adam. But how did he get the governments? How did he get the systems? To a point that he says, it is my own. I will give anybody I want to give it. Follow me. Ezekiel 28. Your spirit opens to me. 
the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Ezekiel 28, verse 14. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. was a story, listen carefully, of what we call the pre-Adamite dispensation. This was a dispensation before Adam, the man that we know. Are we together? The Bible, Ezekiel the prophet is giving access to Revelation and he's speaking about the king of Tyre whose life parallels with that of Lucifer in the days of his glory. Now listen, I hope you know that Lucifer was created. Is that true? And the Bible acknowledges that Lucifer, please help that person. The Bible acknowledges that Lucifer was a cherub. Is that true? A cherub higher than the realm of angels. Are we together? Because by, on, by this time, the mortal man, Adam, was not in the equation. So after God, directly under him were the cherubs or the cherubims. Under the cherubims were the seraphims. Then the seraphims and where the angelic keda, and then the humanoid species that existed within that civilization. Are we together? This was the organogram. And then, this is a description of Lucifer. He says, thou art the anointed cherub. Who anointed him? Listen. Who anointed him? God himself anointed him. And the Bible says that covereth. The word covereth there is the word influence. That you are an anointed cherub. He says, I have set thee so. So it was part of the predetermined counsel of God. That there be a cherub that is given an anointing. Are we together? Now most of you must have heard it. The word anointed there is the word mimshak. You know that. The word mimshak there means, uh, the direct Hebrew rendition means to spread. Like to push your tentacles. The extended meaning also means to multiply your influence within a region. So this is the kind of anointing that he was given. And the gift and the callings of God are without repentance. Are we together? Now listen. Satan was given this anointing. That means Satan also depends on the very power of God to still be Satan today. Are we together? So we are seeing that Satan got this anointing himself from God. He said, I have set this so thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou dost walk up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Most people just teach that all Satan was doing was worshiping heaven. Um, it's not exactly so. Yes, it is true that his description, he said, thou was perfect in thy ways in, in the day that that was created till iniquity was found. Every angel has a will. Satan too has a will. There is nobody in heaven and on earth that is serving God by force. They can choose to rebel. That's why when Satan chose to rebel, listen carefully, God himself had respect for his rebellion. But when you make whatever decision, you'll be ready for the consequence. Now watch this. Let's see how this corrupted anointing worked. If you don't understand this, you will be surprised. Hey, Jimmy, this is heaven where God dwells. Lucifer's anointing is corrupted. And Lucifer's anointing in the presence of God, the epicenter of heaven, influenced one third of the angels. One third. This is heaven where God dwells. And the power of that anointing exerted something on their wheels. Their wheels. He never changed any angel. Look at the warfare that happened in heaven. That Satan, what did he say to the angels that they preferred him to God? 
Look at the throne room and the 24 elders. Yet Satan came with an anointing and spoke something. And one third of the angels said, we will give up the throne room for you. Thou anointed cherub that covereth. Are you seeing how he won the kings of the earth in a moment? Are you seeing how he won the governments and the systems? And he came to Jesus. He said, have you forgotten? I am still anointed, though corrupted. Anyone you want with influence is under my care. There is an anointing. I was the light bearer of heaven. Satan is a master at manipulating the minds of people. Look how easy he entered Peter. Peter, close to Jesus, he just came at will in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus looked and said, this is Satan. Peter, this is not you. Peter did not even know. This is how easy it is. Jesus was on a mission. Satan distracted Jesus to a mountain. Jesus had to return back. The anointed cherub. Let me show you where the power of Satan is. It's not just in witchcraft. The power of Satan is in his ability to capture the wheels of men, of systems, of governments. You see that? So give us 2 Corinthians 10 again. Paul was watching this in a vision while it was being shown him. And Paul said, so this is it. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's not just about demons and spirits. Because a demon is in the wilderness and there was no human being to occupy. And on his own, here, he said, I will go back where humans are. Because in the wilderness, there are no wheels. It's inanimate. Let me go where there are human wheels. And then I manipulate them. Listen. Satan controls the earth by controlling the minds and controlling systems and controlling governments. This is a mystery that I show you. When Satan comes to you, he will not tie your hands. He is a master. There is an anointing, the very power of God working in him. And until God fortifies you, you will fall for his deceit. Satan desired to sift you like wheat. He's telling Peter, Satan desired, whereas Peter has already fallen sins. This is powerful Peter. Satan came to him. Are you seeing why Satan entered Judas? Look how easy it was for him to come into the camp of Jesus and just manipulate people to the point that he almost got Jesus. Gethsemane, Jesus was there. Father, ah, and he said, no, nevertheless, not my will. Listen, Satan went to the wife of, a, of Herod and gave her a dream to advise her husband. And she got up and said, I had a dream. This man is innocent. Don't kill him. It looks like a good thing. If they didn't kill Jesus, there would not be salvation. Satan for you. Are we together? He's a master manipulator. If God does not help you, your mind is a child's play for him. He will beat you at this game. There is an anointing on him. Satan in heaven that there is a roll call he was talking to the angels one by one. The billions of angels in heaven, he won one third of them. To the point that they were ready to dismember themselves and leave their original estate. This is the one we are dealing with. And Paul said, listen, your focus should be on this mind the mystery of strongholds that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal right but to the pulling down of strongholds that's god's emphasis you want to win satan pull down strongholds cast down imaginations 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 why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing Genesis 11, nothing they have chosen to do that they have imagined. Cast down imagination. 
So the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind, there is a kind of mind that must be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That without this mind being in you that was also in Christ Jesus, Satan will beat you at the game hands down. There is an anointing. He deceived angels in the presence of God. Satan came to Jesus and attempted to sway Jesus. The first time he didn't quote a scripture. Then when Jesus replied him, he took him to the mountain. Then the third time he quoted scripture. They shall keep the charge. It is not the quoting of scripture that brings victory, my brother, my sister. That's why Satan can be in a meeting. A demon can be with someone. A pastor is preaching. An anointed man is preaching. The demon is joining the person who is inside listening to. Say hallelujah. He's clapping. He doesn't stop you. And all of a sudden, something happens and the same demon starts jumping out. Didn't he share the praise and worship? How many times did they yell the name of Jesus? Shout Jesus, everybody. You shouted Jesus. He was still there. Quiet. That's how you can share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus, He will share it with you and live to There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen, the most important part of you that Satan wants is not your body. The most important part of you that Satan wants is not your spirit. The most important part of you that Satan wants is your mind. Understand this. Your mind interfaces your body and your spirit. When Satan gets your mind, he gets two for one. He gets your body and your spirit. This is the Bible. I'm showing you because for years, I kept wondering why it looked like Satan was not afraid of many things about God. You close your Bible and lie down on it and sleep. Yet the demons come and press you. How many of you have fasted three days dry and on the third day you had a wicked dream? Demons came and oppressed you. You've not even broken the fast. You spent time blasting in tongues and you came to us men of God and we said you don't have faith. It's a lie. It's a lie. There are not many things Satan is afraid of. I've listed some of them for you. We think he shares everything. No, sir. Satan is never afraid of the presence of God. He's only afraid of what the presence of God does to you. You, not the presence of God. There are people who make this Bible in publishing homes that are currently filled with demons inside them. Yet they are publishing Bibles. I have ministered deliverance to pastors mighty men and women of God with power who are also themselves anointed to deliver people. The mystery of strongholds that Satan captures territories and captures individuals by doing something to their minds. This is what is called witchcraft. Here's what Paul said, O oh, foolish Galatians who has bewitched you not about drinking blood and eating flesh he sells a proposition to you in a way and manner that will force you to receive it and by it you give up the power do you know if jesus saw that kingdom and did that satan would rather collect salvation and give him kingdom Remember, Jesus was about to be coronated after his death to be given a name that is above all names, both of things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And Satan said, let me give you on earth. It looked like a wonderful idea. Are we together? So Paul says, we are not unaware of his, not his power. Satan has many devices. Many, 
many, many devices from the word stratomai, devices, different ways he can come up with all kinds of plans to manipulate the minds of believers. This is Jesus. Satan stands before God and talks to God. And God still respected the free will of Satan. Listen, I'm going to tell you some. I know that I've attacked so many things today. And many people now will insult me again because of all of this. But let me tell you this. I love the body of Christ. But I want you to be powerful. For many years, we were taught that Satan can never access the presence of God. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's not true. There was no place for him found in heaven. Means that the office he occupied was no longer there. But he could access the presence of God. He still can. In the New Testament. Or at least in the ministry of Jesus. Satan came to Jesus many times. He came to Jesus in Peter. He came to Jesus in Judas. He came to Jesus by himself. He was not afraid. It is not the presence of God that scares. So that you have the Holy Spirit inside you. And then people say there is nowhere Satan can come close to you. Be careful. Jesus, Luke chapter 4 verse 1, was full of the Holy Ghost. And yet Satan came to him after fasting. You would think the fasting would have driven him away. Is that true? But after the fasting was attracting him and he came. But there was something Jesus did. He didn't just say, it is written. It is written. What was Satan looking for? Remember, that whole thing was about words and information. There is an information and Jesus gave him another information. The moment he found out that Jesus was informed, the Bible says he withdrew. So when Satan comes to you, he does not search. He searches for if, what do you have? What residue of mystery do you have? What do you know about him? And what don't you know about him? And he can manipulate you and beat your hands down. Brothers and sisters, what does Satan tell a man that makes him to join occult? What does Satan tell a man that he can carry his child and slaughter the child and while blood is coming out, he's laughing? Satan was not there holding the knife. The influence was the strength of the man by himself. Satan only left him with an information and went to bed. And that man slaughters the child. What does Satan tell a man that he dedicates a whole land to Satan? An intelligent man. Look at Jezebel. Look at Jezebel. Under her watch, the powers that be, if you serve God Almighty, you have to go on hiding. The prophets of Baal were flourishing because a woman who sat on the seat of government could manipulate the minds. Look at what Satan did to Herodias. A small girl dances before a man and then a man comes and says what do you want even if it's up to half of my kingdom I will give you is that normal listen one of the ways Satan has destroyed our lives and our families is through witchcraft but it is not witchcraft as we know he uses our imagination and distracts us into thinking it is just the drinking blood part of it and the old woman there. Whereas the true point of access of victory is something that he does to our minds and our imaginations to keep us through. Why does Satan love pictures? Why do you go to bed and Satan uses the face of your own mother to come and strangle you? And you get up in the morning. He never told you anything. You just went to bed and saw the face of your mother. And you got up and went to a prophet. And then Satan now shows a true prophet the face of your mother too. And he confirms with what he sent to you in the dream. And says your mother is a witch. And you are a powerful prayer warrior. Yet you walk around believing your mother is a witch. Are you getting what I'm telling you? The anointed Sheryl. He was not just a musician. No. No. He was not just a musician. There was an anointing on Satan. For unusual influence over the minds of people. 
That's what we call Nimshak. That anointing you see was given to Satan. God still gives it to men. Are we together? This is not just some... <clears throat> The, when you see any man commanding strange dimensions of influence and getting loyalty over the minds of people, whether in the secular, whether in the Christendom, it is that same anointing that is operational. A wicked man like Saddam Hussein, look at terrorists. Can you imagine there are still people enrolling in terrorist groups today? Young boys will sit down and say, I want to become Hapa. Someone goes to school and studies medicine for six years and just donates himself. Is that normal? There is a grace. That was the grace that Jesus put on these disciples, on learned men. And in one day, the Bible said they were caught in the heart. Men and brethren, what do we do? And from that day to death, they stayed with him. The same grace that Satan used to deceive one third of the angels that fell. All power. I'm not saying to use demon powers or this. I'm explaining something powerful to you. That when God wants to give you influence, he gives you an anointing that does something to the minds of men. Break every that that is the kind of anointing that people go to the occult and say I want to start a business listen carefully and they bargain with Satan the spirit of the Antichrist they would tell you listen let me tell you this if you are in this kingdom there is a meter on earth that watches the rising of men there is a level where if you are rising in life and Satan is not aware he will come to you Trust me, he will come to you and say, I am seeing that you are doing something notable on earth and you have bypassed me. What is the issue? We can negotiate and it will continue. Most people will never tell you. I don't care whether you are a man of God or you are a businessman. There is a level on this earth you cannot rise to until you go through look for experience. Satan must come. He will find a way of coming to you. I shared with you years ago one night when I was praying in the spirit in the night. Is that true? And all of a sudden, I saw that my, the, the zinc, everything just opened up and I saw a strange creature. The eyes were as big as the head of a man. And I saw it. The tail was another living thing. And it was fuming and looking at me. And he said, you think you can bring God's people to a place of abundance? I shared that encounter. He will come. The realm of the spirit watches the progress of men. There is, an, there is a level where if you are rising and playing around, it doesn't threaten hell. But when you get to a level, they will come. I assure you. Everybody you see who has risen without God knows what I'm telling you. They will act like they don't know it. From businessmen to investors, to heads of government, to presidents. There are positions you can never rise until that negotiation is sealed. Look at Solomon. What happened to Solomon? After offering a thousand bond offerings, God too came to him and said, Solomon, let's do something. Only two of them knew. If not that Solomon told you, you will just know he got up in the morning. Strange influence. Nobody rises like that is a lie. There must be a visitation. I want to be great in the name of Jesus. I'll be greater than Bill Gates. Get ready for look for. Something will happen. Do you know why I'm saying this? Because some of you will be surprised. The two of this fast, while you are fasting, you go to bed in the night and here comes your ancient one idol in your family that has not appeared in hundred years. He comes to you and says, what, what is going on in this koinonia you are part of? I say your your father was a rich man. Do you know what made him rich? Say I know he went to Harvard. He said nonsense. Let me tell you, there was a negotiation. I hear that this young man is teaching you something. Are you ready to agree with me? And no government can stand you, or will you negotiate and I frustrate you? And you say, Satan, is it not this anointing? There is the God, the giver of all grace, access to the minds of people. Listen. 
what happened in Babylon when those three boys were rising? The, Satan was uncomfortable and because he, he acts out his will by men, every time you start rising, watch what happens to the men around you. Have you not seen that some of you, as you are coming to this fast now, those who were at peace with you have started quarreling, fighting you. There is something happening in the realm of the spirit. You make up your mind. I'm, I'm going to marry right. I'm going to live right. And then you are walking. Satan does not disturb you. But there is a level. You are a man of God. You are rising. Anointing. You are winning souls. A day will come. You will have strange visitations. And Satan will say, look. You are not the only man of God rising. We can negotiate this. I won't disturb your assembly. You will grow with wildfire. But you are part of those kingdoms. That he showed Jesus. There are people who nothing stops them on earth because the factor to stop them has negotiated with them. So their life will be so easy and you will look at them and say, ah, what is this? And Satan will say, likewise. Go and ask any rich man you know. You first talk about this, they will, they will turn and say, don't, don't disturb me. They know. It's not a lie. Whether young or old. I'm not talking of 1 million, 20. Go and meet somebody. He will tell you. There is nobody that rises to certain influence without bowing to someone. It has to be God or Satan. The power of strongholds. That Satan can capture your mind. When he captures your mind, you have bowed to him. It's not by doing this. That means the same way when you will your mind to God and say, this is an instrument. Oh Lord, put something upon my mind. Put something upon my life. All of a sudden, an anointing comes upon your mind. And my brother, my sister, your life will be a sign and a wonder even to you. That men will look at you and say, Kai, this thing is not normal. It's true, it's not normal. It can't be normal. You see what is going on in this ministry? We will be foolish to imagine it's normal. No. The mystery of strongholds. It says, pulling down strongholds. What strongholds? That by, by birth, Satan has programmed Zaria already. Since. Satan has programmed Nigeria. Since. Listen. Satan does not go around just chasing you. He's too busy to look for you. There is already a programming. As you are between 10 to 15, there is one that kicks off. Between 15 to 20, there is, it kicks off till you become an old man. And Paul said, if you want to fight warfare, don't just cast spirits alone. If you want to fight warfare, attack the programming. Something has happened to you. That's why the people in your village behave the same way. No spirit directly appears to them. Everyone in your village is angry. It's not just that an individual demon is running. A programming happened. You enter a territory and all the ladies from 13, 14, 15, all pregnant. No matter how nice they are, it's a programming. And it says you are not free. No, that means I can cast a demon from you. That demon will go, but when the stronghold, that mindset is there, the demon still calls you home. He goes through desert regions and says there are no human beings here. And returns back and sits down and calls others more, greater than it is. And the Bible says the end of that man will be worse than the beginning. So he said, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. There is something Satan has programmed that will never allow any... That's why Satan, when Satan does that programming, he will let you go to church. Because he knows the kind of pastor you will meet. So he's not afraid. Go, 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 go for the conference. Go for the convention. And you can fast for 10 days and he won't disturb you. Pray. Fast. He already knows what he has gotten. But by the time... A man of God begins to talk to you about this stronghold. Then you start seeing agitations. He will start coming. You are, you are touching a nerve that matters in the spirit. What is going on here? Who is teaching this? Why? 
Do you know how you have been called out of every tribe and tongue and nation? Not just because you are born again, but that you have been given access. There is an anointing that can teach you. It can start teaching you something new that is not in agreement with what Satan has programmed you into being. And all of a sudden, your life will begin to close the door for darkness to find expression. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. That means he puts something of himself in everyone. So as he keeps moving around over a territory, you say, I see, these are my people. He identifies you by what he put in you. But he looked at Jesus, he said, why are you different? He looked at Babylon and saw everyone with it. But he saw three Hebrew boys. He said, no, destroy these three boys. Why did they? That is it's like the mark of the beast. He put it in everyone. So you are born. You, you can be educated, be as educated as you want to be. Marry, have children. But that programming remains there. But in this week of seven days prayer and fasting, my brother, my sister, the mistake Satan made was to allow you to be part of this program. Because something will... De listen, listen. This thing I teach you is that old wine skin that God must take away. The problem is not just the wine. The wine skin itself cannot take what God is doing. Let me tell you this. If Satan could kill me, that would be his number one assignment. To kill this guy, let him just die and let this thing be over. When you know this about Satan, he will pass you like this and you will pass him. I tell you the truth. It's true. He came to Jesus, did not find anything of himself, and he kept waiting. How do I manipulate? So Satan's job on earth is not just to come to individuals, so is to watch over territories and governments. All the captains of industries, all, without exception, all people of influence, there has been a fraternity with a spirit somewhere. Either the spirit of the Lord God Almighty or this mystery that I'm telling you. Luke chapter 4 is a reality that must happen before any kind of influence is established on earth. He said, all these have been given unto me and I will give anybody I choose. Did you hear Satan say that? So don't be surprised when a musician sings nonsense and all of a sudden two million copies sell in one month. That anointing was put upon that record label. He sang rubbish, but you listen to it, you don't even want to dance and soon you find out you are shaking your head. Something is wrong with you. That music is doing something. You don't want to listen, but you put it in your phone and save it as gospel music. In the night, you just quietly listen. And as you are listening, that, that reprogramming is happening again. This thing is not the issue of just spirits chasing you. No. This is an issue of something, a mindset, a stronghold. Their job is just to supervise. Because they know it will always be with you. It's with you while you study. It's with you while you graduate. The moment you become the CEO of a company, Satan laughs. Because all those 130 people in that company have through that stronghold come under his influence. This is what makes him the prince of darkness. That guy you see is still using his anointing. Go and meet Satan today and tell him, give me an anointing. An anointing to sing or dance or do whatever agree with him the plan is going to be make sure at every point you find a way of capturing these people to me so he gives you influence then you give them back read Revelation 13 they bow to the Antichrist you see that now the who now worships the beast so Satan will not come directly he will send you like a businessman who sends someone in front to be doing business for him, but it's his own. So this lady, all of a sudden, Satan now says, and there are other agents like that on earth. So they know who is initiated. So immediately they work things out for you. If it's capital you need, you get it fast. If it's access to record labels, you get it fast. Within one month, your album is everywhere. And you who is a believer, I won't bow to Satan, but no spiritual intelligence. Not only will you not move, they will crush you intentionally. 
you want to become a millionaire look for welfare that's why i tell you it's not the issue of business you can do all the business you want a day will come you will get to a level that you will see people in the bank looking at you they all know themselves you travel somewhere they look at you in the plane that's why they ask you a question what do you do what do you do they are not stupid they are saying are, are we together are we a team and you say no i'm from another camp how did you get here how did you get here this is our dull world where the devil keeps manipulating and men just look and say you mean it you are 26 and you're a billionaire didn't you go to school who rises like that look at all these guys producing cabbages everything they produce must work because they have sold not just their soul but their minds have you heard of that selling your soul it's not your spirit you take your mind and say satan this is the bargain give me influence and i give you men and so he puts that anointing on you that's why when people see young people like us and see what god is doing because they know they will look at you like a suspect and say could it be that you too you have received something from those people are you seeing why the influence of jesus disturbs some people crowds followed him to the mountain everywhere and the scribes sat down and said something is wrong bro. this guy is running us out of business and so they concluded that the answer is to kill him and the bible calls it the hidden wisdom of god god planned it that way they were scheming his killing to the point that they were willing to release barabbas barabbas that was a notorious criminal they said we rather release him we can always capture his mind again but let's kill this jesus listen do you know why i'm teaching you this there is something about your life that satan is already seeing they are watching you everywhere nobody has risen like this normally in your village and all of a sudden you are rising you are even fasting seven days and in your mind you believe as you are fasting you are driving all of them very soon you will begin to have encounters and the devil will come like look for and try to tell you look let me make this job easy for you i know what you are looking for is it not admission is it not greatness is it not influence is it not this we can negotiate it to you you just had a dream i had a dream and that's it and you get up anybody that stops you just dies and you think you are powerful one day the devil will remind you that i've been backing you up for 20 years it's time to give something back now and my demand is your firstborn and your wife the bible says, mark the wicked something will always happen in their lives that will let you know this was not normal go and give this message to a very wealthy businessman when he leaves he will pieces the cassette and throw it away tell you this is be careful with all these young boys be very careful be careful are you listening to what i'm teaching you because we are going to pray a stronghold is not just demonic a stronghold is an information that has become a program in your mind that makes you loyal to the sender the sender of that the, a stronghold is like a chain that holds your mind and so satan captures men like this that's why the greatest miracle that can happen to you is the opening of your understanding i keep telling you this the bible says then open ye their understanding the miracle that needs to happen to you tonight my brother my sister is not just a miracle of healing the sick there is something that happens to your mind and that sickness will go there is something that will not happen to your mind and you may be healed tonight and by next week it has come back casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ bringing every thought look at me this is where it is this is where your poverty is this is where the suffering is this is what strengthens the causes to walk there is something that has been programmed that makes you even if a man of God says you are free all of a sudden the devil knows that he is still in your mind and he will show you one dream that takes you back he knows 
is a master manipulator. Satan, from whence cometh thou from moving to and fro the earth? Doing what? Just going around kingdoms and seeing which kingdom belongs to me. Ah, this one does not belong to me. Okay, who are the kings in that kingdom? And he captures them and then leaves the kingdom and goes to another one. This is his work. This is his work. But in the next few minutes, we are going to pray. I don't know about you, but listen. This is where God brought me freedom. I saw people in my lineage. I saw people where I came from. Helpless. Have you not seen the way people's results are still the same? Regardless of vocation. Some are even pastors. Whatever, it is still the same. A stronghold. But he said the weapons of our warfare. He will let you do your business provided that mindset is there. Continue doing it. He will give you access. But that you want to route it another way, not him. You must fight a fight of warfare. The governments, the systems of this world. Listen. Listen. You are a civil servant. No problem. Do your thing. They promote you first promotion, that's all right. Second promotion, that's all right. By the time you get to the third promotion, you will find out that people who should not be talking about your issue are saying, Come on. It is after the third promotion they now say, Boy, this person is Igbo. But it's, it's a lie, it's not Igbo anything. There are people who are under the influence of that's the devil pulling that string. Do something. This guy is not for us. If you allow him rise, he will recruit people. Because if you allow him rise, he will be in a board meeting with all the executives and he will play a message. And there is power in that message. They will hear. And when they get born again, they will go back to their subunits and do the same thing. Let me tell you something. Satan can lose a territory if those are both surrender to God. Satan can lose a territory in one week. The secret to world evangelization or world dominion is not just evangelism, it's influence. That's why when Jesus was preaching, every time he saw an influential man, he stopped. He saw the centurion. He said, no, 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 let me go. He saw Zacchaeus. He said, Zacchaeus, you have influence. You are a tax collector. You are the head of CBN. Come down. I'm going to your house. Because by visiting you, that something will happen to that territory. Listen, Satan does not work the way we think he is. That he pursues you as an individual. He doesn't have that time. Do you know what it takes for Satan to zoom his attention on you? No. He just puts little demons around to just supervise what he has done. When you are about deviating here, they just coordinate you. One sickness, one headache just to bring you back. Like a buffer solution. But Satan himself, he's on earth. Satan is on earth. My question is, who now is in his mind? That's the person you should respect. Who now is giving Satan sleeplessness? When Satan comes to Zaria, if he's to talk to one person, who will it be? Who is Satan so threatened? My assignment is to make you that person. That there is something about your understanding. That the moment you go home in two weeks, Everyone who is not saved is saved. Doors are open. And they say, what is all this? We believe in bowing down to a shrine. But you came to this house and favor started coming. Listen, this is what happened when God wanted to lift Joseph. All the diviners had a formula for getting answers. And God shuts the heaven and said, Joseph, go. The people were surprised. The king was disappointed. You are my wise men. You are my sorcerers. And you could not interpret my dream. And the Lord brought Joseph. And they were watching, ready to laugh. Like Janus and Jambes. That's why they were surprised. Moses, where did you come from? Who taught you how to turn a rod? He said, I met with another man. I, I had an encounter. The anointed cherub that covereth like an eagle spread her wings. He covers businesses. He covers great men. He covers husbands. He covers wives. He covers families. And says nobody comes within this circumference without making allegiance to me. 
so paul says when you are about to fight warfare don't just focus on that spirit trying to find out what is the name of the spirit the spirit too is on assignment the real thing to conquer is the programming is someone ready to pray tonight open your mouth and begin to bless in tongues Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Say, every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. You somebody's hands. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every handwriting. Every handwriting. Every ordinance. Every ordinance. Every programming. Every programming. Over my lineage. Over my over my, lineage, over my territory. Over my over my, territory, over my mind. Over my mind. I command you. I command you. Be destroyed now. Open your mouth and pray. Look at 
anointing. You know why the Bible says, I will multiply them. They will not be few. I will glorify them. Listen, there is an anointing that if God puts on your mind, that idea must expand. No, that's how it works. There is an anointing that if God puts on your ministry, it will bring people under loyalty to the vision that God has given you. Listen, you are a businessman. Without this anointing, your products will not go far. I tell you this. I like you to say in the name of Jesus. In the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. The anointing. The, the anointing, anointing that brings influence. That brings influence. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. For performance, for, for performance, the anointing, the anointing for expansion, for expansion. I receive it now. I receive it now. a message from a ministry in Zaria that somebody will collect it in the US, in the UK and his assignment is to make sure everybody hears it. You to think. What is it that will make a taxi driver drive it and Koinonia message is playing that you go to fix your phone and without your permission someone transfers messages. There is an anointing. Oh there is a grace. We are going to pray this thing. No, don't be foolish. Because let me tell you this. This is why many people remain small. It's not by traveling abroad. It's by what you are carrying, having wings in the spirit. There is a grace that gives the works of your hands wings. You will be in a cave like Elijah. And no man will come and look for you. 
He said, Gentiles shall come to your land and kings, you won't go to them. This anointing will drop them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I command by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Go with this strange anointing right now. Go and increase and multiply. I decree and declare that from tonight, the grace of God is at work in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the loudest praise to the King. We give you the highest, the highest praise to the King. We give you the loudest, the loudest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the pain. You have taken all the shame. You have taken all the trouble. You have taken all limitations. You have made them your highest praise to the King. Inaimaka, 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 Suja.
Holy Spirit, we cry tonight that you open our eyes yet again. Give us the keys of the kingdom. Open our minds. Open our understandings. Let us comprehend the mystery that you have committed unto us tonight. And Lord, let these keys give us power. Let these keys give us authority. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a while, a few minutes. And we're back on our feet. Hallelujah. Seven days of encounter. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared to Samuel at Shiloh through his word. The Lord appeared through his word. The Lord gives encounters by granting people access to mysteries. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to consider a very deep mystery. I don't know if we will be able to finish it tonight. But wherever we stop, we will take it tomorrow. From home, the Lord told me beginning from today, right until Thursday, there will be massive angelic activities. That's what the Lord told me. People will receive literal visitations. Literal visitations of angels. Visitations of angels. Prayer lives coming alive. Mantles, fire, the coal from heaven being put upon people. There are ministries that will be birthed from these seven days. Visions. People that will be, the Lord will tap you to begin to write things. Destiny issues. These are issues that will shape the understandings of people. Hallelujah. It was while Daniel was fasting and after 21 days the Bible says the angel said I was sent to come and give you understanding. I was sent to bring. What I brought is called understanding. Hallelujah. We reign in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know. A mystery is simply a hidden code of operation. There are certain things that are not given to mere men. It says it has been given to you to know. The Bible calls them the secrets. Jesus called them the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Grant us grace. In the name of Jesus. Please listen carefully. We are going to pray. We have prayed. That's why we have some sessions to pray before I come up. Just be patient. Just, just flow gently, Elijah. And I want you to listen. Overflow. One, two, three. Because what I'm going to share tonight is going to open your eyes to many things. I know some of you are yet to understand yesterday's teaching, but you just follow. That's why the teachings are uploaded for you to listen. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm sharing a very, very deep, deep mystery. The mystery of the serpent and the woman. Write it down. Hmm. The mystery of the serpent and the woman. Genesis chapter 3, please. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. You are the source of our life. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, my hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, Lord, I look to Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh. Genesis chapter 3. Please sit down. I'd like us to look at scripture for a few minutes and let, let, let the Lord open our eyes to a very deep mystery. This was after man fell. The Bible says 
that the Lord, they had the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. Please follow me carefully. And then the Bible says that he, he came to man, Adam now, and said, Adam, where are you? Where are you? The first question was, was he missing? That means God kept, there was a position in the spirit where God could always see him from heaven. Are we together? And God found out that seat was vacant. And he said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. Remember our teaching yesterday that Satan dominates men by transferring an information. And he said, who told you? Where did you hear this from? I never gave you that information. You allowed a stranger to give you an information. And then he said, the woman. This is where my teaching starts. The mystery of the serpent and the woman. He said, the woman you gave me is the cause of my problem. And he said, woman, what is this that you have done? And then she replied back. She said, the serpent. There was a stranger that always visited me. He never caught me, but he kept telling me things. And on the strength of the information he gave me, he beguiled me. And he turned to the serpent. And he caused the serpent. Now, let's follow. He said, listen now. This is God speaking, not Angel Michael. Not Angel Gabriel. God, your God. He said, I will put enmity between thee. Who is the thee? The serpent. And the woman. Then he says, now listen. So, case one is that you and the woman will be enemies. We can take that, but please read carefully. He says, I'm between thy seed. Whose seed? Your offspring, your descendants, and her descendants. This enmity is not just you and the woman. Serpent, you are going to reproduce yourself and have a generation. And those people, they will coexist in the same territory. It says this enmity will not only be between you and the woman. Are we together now? Your seed and her seed. And he said, he shall bruise thy head and you shall bruise his heel. This is God speaking. Now watch this. Have you seen the child of Satan anywhere? Remember, he's not talking about those possessed. This is not demon possession here. He's talking of people who were giving birth to an offspring. <laughs> I will put enmity between you and the woman. Listen, let me tell you something. The first thing I want to tell you here is that if you are a woman, a lady, just for being a woman, there is a war on your life. Whether you are a baby woman, or old woman, or adult woman, there is, there is a vendetta between Satan and women. And I will show you. Women are not just figures with wombs. There is, there is a deep mystery about them. Follow me carefully. So this is God speaking. I will put enmity between you and the woman. And then between her seed of course we know theologically speaking that that seed is Christ but it's not just Christ alone because Christ came as a person and there is an implication just like the seed of Abraham being Christ Galatians 3 29 says and if he be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so we are talking about something that is both prophetic here are we together now question where is the seed of Satan? That means on this earth, there are several kinds of people. We claim there are 7.2 billion people on the earth. Human beings. We are so wrong. Because there are people on this earth that are descendants of the serpent. Satan. I'm not talk, they are not possessed. 
Salvation is not for them because salvation is for men. These people, we are not talking of evangelism and born again. Are we together? That in your earth now, your territory, there are people just the same way Satan cannot receive salvation. The same way Satan can be saved, can be born again. There is a descendant, there is a generation of a species of people, not in the spirit, not in planet Mars, not in Pluto, on earth now. They walk around your environment, but they are not humans. Just follow me. It is not hidden in the Bible that we are not alone. From Genesis to Revelation, you see that there has been an interference. Human beings have at several points encountered angels, encountered Jesus, is that true? Encountered spirits. If you listen, some of you, if you understand what I'm saying, before I finish talking, you will see that certain diseases will just leave. This thing is an old story. Just follow me. Are we together? Now, theologically speaking, give us Genesis chapter 6. Those of us who have, God has granted grace to do a little study. You would have learned. Hallelujah. The Bible says, it came to pass. Look up, please. When men began to multiply. Remember, multiply was a command God gave men. So men were doing what was correct. Men began to multiply. How? Through reproduction. So it is alright for a man to impregnate a woman and have a child. God designed it that way. Are we together now? Listen carefully. And then the Bible says, daughters were born unto them. Next verse. That the sons of God, now, hold on carefully. That they were a group of people who were watching what was going on on earth where men were reproducing and multiplying the bible calls them sons of god this translation in itself is an error because it has created problem in the body of christ are we together because people think these sons of god is the same that jesus says as many as received him i hope you know that the translation of the bible was not done by angels it was done by human beings with their imperfections who were also influenced at several it is the potency of the scripture that is unbendable but the the linguistic of it you need the spirit of god if not by itself it can deceive you because human beings wrote it down are, are we okay now the sons of god saw that the daughters of men were fair. So whoever this group of people are, we know they are not men. Do we agree? Look at it. The Bible says those whoever they are, that they saw on earth that they were a group of women. The word fair there just means they were beautiful. So these people had emotions. They could see a beautiful woman and be attracted to her. Are we together now? And then the Bible says, and they took them wives of all that they chose. Question. Do you think the women will see a beast waving his hands? Sister, if I came to you with wings and drop with light flashing and I say I love you, would you run? The Bible says they took wives. It didn't say they raped them. There was something Satan told the women. Those descendants and made them follow and became wives. And then the Bible says, The Lord said, My spirit and all of that, go to verse 4. And then he says, There were giants in the earth. He's now telling us the products of this union between these entities and the daughters of men. That there were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, he said, When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bear what? Please talk to me. Children. Now, children is a human term. You don't use children for angels. You don't use children for all of this. So something had happened between these spirits and these women. And the result is physical. Children. Just like your child. Are you seeing that now? 
and the bible says the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown stop where are these children today giants are just a side effect but that's, that's not the only thing the union produced because the bible says they were children are we together the word sons of god there he gave birth theologically speaking many of you have studied it one of the class of these offsprings were called the nephilims are we together now yes the nephilims here talk about that aberration the, the original word nephilim means the fallen ones are we together now rebels that were a product of this union and the bible says they gave birth to physical children meaning you would see them and say good morning sir you would think it's just another human and another human but the bible says these people you see are not pure human beings this bet did not happen in heaven now there are many theologians i don't want to waste our time tonight but this has been an argument between teachers of the gospel for many years that it cannot have been angels why because two scriptures that the bible says to none of the angels did he say thou art my son i told you there is a mistake the word yes benign elohim the word that is translated there is not just the word son like an offspring of a person i hope you know that lucifer was not the first to throw down angels there have been angels that have fallen but it was not under lucifer's leadership <laughs> there are angels that are bound in chains now that lucifer has nothing to do with they are not his offspring he was not the cause but they fell the lake of fire did not start now it's been there it's a system of god's justice angels have their wills they can choose to rebel are you listening to me now please understand what i'm teaching you and then the bible says these men came come and got wives the women i don't know whether they thought they were marrying human beings or marrying whatever but one thing the bible tells us clearly is that the children that came from these women were strange now listen carefully and then the bible tells us go to verse 5 let me see where we can stop and god saw notice the mention of wickedness happened the moment these offsprings came listen listen men were already bad but the wickedness did not touch god but when these angels mix with a human race the offspring that came, they came with a level of wickedness that a pure human being cannot produce. That is true that men fell, but it was not so wicked. Hear what the Bible says, that God saw that the wickedness of man now was great in the earth. And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. These guys had done something to the race. And hear what God said. God, oh, your God, and it repented God that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. What kind of wickedness did these Nephilims introduce that made things so bad? Listen, you look at our world today and see certain levels of wickedness and inhuman activity. A human being cannot do it. Have you seen where there is an accident? And you see people, it's not whether they are Christians or Muslims. They run to help the person. Those are men. Because no matter their differences, they still have that sense of sympathy. But there are men whose behavior is not human. So we are discussing something here that is a very, very serious subject. That he said, woman... There will be something between you and this serpent. You are going to have offsprings. Christ being the chiefest of them. But make no mistake. This guy you see. Is going to find a way of bringing an offspring too. So eventually it will be a clash of offsprings. That Satan has his own offsprings. On earth.
the angels that did not keep their original estate and they came down when angels came and visited abraham abraham's wife made physical food please talk to me is that true did the angels not eat it they ate it they swallowed it it entered their body it's only because the bible said they were angels that's why we know if we just saw them in a drama we think they were human beings but they ate are we together a lot of people say spirits and angels cannot give birth they can't produce that's an error how did mary get pregnant when angel gabriel came to mary and he said you are highly favored madam you are going to be pregnant she said no 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 no. i was not taught this way it is impossible to be pregnant without a human man and the angel said let me tell you there is something that is a reality in the realm of the spirit the a spirit can come upon you and then you will have a physical child not a spiritual child a spirit in this case is the holy ghost but it's a character that is possible with all spirits that it can come upon you and without a man hold on but the seed that that spirit puts is still compatible with your womb and it can give birth to something else are we together now so satan hears that instruction and then the bible leaves a very serious gap that i'm not going to discuss this night and all of a sudden all that the bible tells us is that eve became pregnant and then gave birth to Cain. follow me carefully and then she gave birth to abel and we see two people come up and we see a behavior that was not in adam was not in eve are we together now we see Cain manifesting a strange behavior and he kills his brother abel notice from genesis there is nowhere in the bible where the genealogy is given and you hear Cain and Abel mentioned again. Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Where did they throw Cain and Abel? Were they not children too? It's not for tonight's discussion, but there is a long story about that Cain and Abel, you see. Because Paul borrowed that story in the book of Romans to teach about the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh. Are we together? Paul said, just like a woman, just like Eve was pregnant, there are two people walking in me. One man is the spirit, so that I serve the Lord with my spirit. But I see another law. Like a woman carrying children. And all of them are behaving as though they came from different men. The fallen ones. Give us John chapter 8. Let's hear something that Jesus is saying from verse 43. John chapter 8. If you are a Christian, just look up. John chapter 8. Jesus now comes many years later and he's teaching us. Why do ye not understand my speech? This is Jesus now. He says, even because ye cannot hear my word. Who is he talking to? He's talking to a group of people who are making his ministry difficult. Some of them were scribes. Some of them were Pharisees. Remember, we're talking about the offsprings. Listen carefully. Jesus shows up and the people opposing him are not the prostitutes. The people opposing him are not the drunkards. There was a group of people with unusual influence. Remember yesterday I taught you that Satan called Jesus and said, Don't bother. All the people in position are mine. I own this system. Now, these guys are making life difficult. Please read for me what Jesus says. One to read. Stop. You are of who? Who is talking now? What did Jesus call the Pharisees and the Sadducees? He said you are offsprings. I look at you and I see your behavior. You guys are not humans. You look like you are humans. You are of your father, the devil. He's not just saying you are listening to Satan. Like I look at Pastor Alpha's son and I say, ah, this is Pastor Alpha's son. And he looked and discerned. 
He said, you are among men, carrying a regalia in the temple, moving around like priests, but I look at you. You guys are not pure human beings. The real human being among them broke his pride and came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, I'm too, I, I can't hide it. This thing is touching me. But there were some hardened guys that were just moving. It didn't matter what Jesus did. You are of your father, the devil, and the lost desires of your father, you will do. Are you seeing that now? So they are not in that temple to please God. They were sent on assignment, although wearing a priestly regalia. Look, we are discussing the Bible now. Is there anything I'm saying that is not in the Bible? You are not here as human beings, just raising children and being a nice father. You are on assignment and the lust of your father he will do. Then he gave them an information for them to know he knew what he was saying. Why will Jesus tell them this extra information if they didn't know anything about it? He said he was a murderer. He took them back. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks so satan is a speaking spirit it's not only god he said he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it give us 45 and because i tell you the truth ye believe me not Jesus meets a group of people. He kept studying their behavior and looking at them and saying, No. Are you not seeing how heartless these people are? That for 18 years a woman was too bound. Is it not in your Bible? Crying every day for 18 years. Yet these guys were in the temple. And the day Jesus comes and heals her, everybody is happy except this group of people. They say, What is the meaning of this? And Jesus said, ah, what sort of people are you? This heart, a human being cannot have it. Ah. There are some of the people in our villages that we think are just relatives. They have manifested characteristics that human beings cannot be the ones having. There is a way a man speaks. You will know that this is not demon possession. This one is a species that is even Jesus was not a pure human being even Jesus was not a pure human being yet he moved with the disciples he slept with them he got up in the morning and he looked at them and at a point he surprised them before your father Abraham was I am 33 years ah, ah. they said don't, don't play with our intelligence he said continue your rubbish I'm telling you this when the demon saw him they said, no, 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 Jesus. Have you come to destroy us before our time? Jesus said, be silent. Look at how they were talking. You see a 33-year-old man and you are talking something ancient and the disciples, that's why the disciples got angry. They said, look, you better tell us who you are. This thing is paining us now. Today you are this. We are eating bread. We know your mother is alive. Next tomorrow we are seeing something else again. Remember the Bible says, Mary kept these things to herself. So Mary did not share with people. It was just a scandal that ended. That Mary was pregnant. Oh, and Joseph said he's not the one. And after a few years they said, well, Joseph just take it. So most people did not know. Because Mary kept it. I will put enmity between the serpent and the woman. And between his seed and her seed can we look at something else before we pray <laughs> now watch this we have established the fact that a spirit is under constant watch over a woman the most important part of a woman for satan is not her figure it's not her face it's her womb that womb is a serious issue for Satan. Listen carefully. So that the next time you see that a woman cannot get pregnant, you know that it's not just the issue of the man. There is an old story. This womb of a woman is a threat to Satan. 
because it is the mechanism God designed. Are we together now? Yes. Do you know why the angels came and started sleeping with the daughters of men? In an attempt to plant a seed because they thought Mary was part of them. She thought at least Mary has to be among these beautiful women. And they started coming at random to have an affair with the women. Every child that was born, they studied the prophecy behind him. The moment they had something unusual, they said, attack him. So they looked for Moses. They looked for everybody. The moment they heard that there was something unusual, when John the Baptist was born, they kept coming to say, who are you, John? It was the spirit of the Antichrist manipulating people. They wanted to ask John. John kept confusing them. Who are you, John? Where did you come from? We just know that they say you are in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey. Are you a human being at all, John? Your father is Zachariah. Yes, we know. Your mother is Elizabeth. But human beings eat food. They eat fish. They eat bread. What kind of a person are you that you are in the wilderness alone and all you are eating is locusts and wild honey? John said, I'm the voice of one crying. They said, what is this one again? That John bar, we'll talk about him one day because that John you see, the Bible says, many of you think John was a normal human being. No, sir. A man that was born filled with the Spirit. It's in your Bible. And then Jesus told them, if you can bear it, that is Elijah you have been looking at. He said, if, if you have the faith to receive, that guy wearing all those things is your Elijah. This is where the people of our traditional vi our villages studied what they call reincarnation. It is where they got this aberrated concept that they say people can come back to life and re manifest having another body. Hallelujah. Now listen carefully. This generation, this generation of God's people have a battle that they do not even realize that they are fighting. Are we together? There is an intentional offspring of Satan that is on rampage to destroy everything that is Christ. There are men who are possessed. There are men who are manipulated. But there are people who are not human beings. These ones cannot receive salvation. You, I pray that one day the Holy Spirit will open your eyes. To see and believe this thing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. When Paul and Barnabas did something extraordinary, the people looked at them and said, You guys are not pure human beings. They knew. They called one Zeus and they called another Hermes. They were not surprised. This way, when you study classical Greek mythology, this way, this way, Greek gods. They were also part of these offsprings. The Nephilims were not the only people. There were many other classifications. And let me tell you this. There are still those species on earth. You have been looking for giants. There are some who are not giants. But they are devils. Satan has made sure that they occupied strategic positions. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are of the father, the devil. Jesus is talking to the men of God of his days. Who go to church every Sunday and preach to people. Jesus is and looked and said, no way. Uh -uh. You guys are not just scribes. You are not just Pharisees. I look at you and I see that you are of your father, the devil. Now, let me tell you where this gets serious and where it applies to us tonight. We'll still continue. I'm just touching this whole thing just to give us... Do we all agree with me so far? I want to explain a few things that will surprise you now. The Bible lets us know. You know that everyone who is born and it is a spirit entity or not a pure human being, that child comes with extra characteristics. Is that true? Either they are gigantic or some unusual strength or something. It has been an age-long experiment that Satan wants to corrupt this race 
because when men become too corrupted god will have to destroy he knows that his time is short are you getting what i'm saying this is what has led to some of the incurable diseases that we have today this the origin of these diseases was not a virus roaming around it's an experiment women where do you find fibroid in a woman's body on her head talk to me the same place where a seed should be a woman goes to bed in the night and a stranger comes watch this she thinks she's dreaming and that stranger is having all kinds of union with her she gets up in the morning knowing that somebody slept with me and then all of a sudden something begins to happen to her system that should not be and if for any reason that fibroid is there and you try to put your seed as a man it will kill it and survive are we together then comes cancer a disease that comes upon you with its own life and starts growing independent of the nutrients of your body because everything that is drawing from your body should grow at the same pace but this one comes with its life multiplies and tries to kill every other good cell you call it unicellular yet it is so intelligent it knows its assignment it breaks down your immune system and destroys you are you getting what i'm saying now and then all of a sudden it happens too a man will go to bed in, in the night to sleep and all of a sudden you find out that there are all kinds of unholy union this man will get up knowing that although he went to sleep you know preachers don't talk about this because it looks like an ugly part of uh, this thing but i want to explain to you a mystery and all of a sudden that man gets married and becomes impotent and cannot explain what is going on look at how satan is passionate about seeds jesus explained this in a parable because the people did not have the acumen to understand he said there was a man who had seeds and wanted to go to the farm is that true the bible says he planted wheat correct he says while men slept another person who was holding seeds waiting for nights to come also came to the same farm that farm is the earth and planted tears among wheat and the bible says he went his way is that true the bible says both seeds grew it is a one died both seeds grew and then in the passage of time the people started noticing that these seeds they were all looking green but at this point their characteristics something is different and they came they said sir was it not wheat that you sowed here and then he looked and smiled he said an enemy has come this breed is not pure something someone came to the earth that when men sleep in the night on planet earth there are entities not that they come from mass they move around they enter the dream life of people they come physically and try to sow seeds remember that's all they come to do they don't come to discuss they come to sow seeds and walk away our generation if we don't have intelligence we're in trouble because as at the time the bible was written this experiment had not been advanced to discover fibroid or hepatitis the same way she, the seed of the woman is growing in advancement this is how satan is experimenting ways of making this corruption effective you don't find fibroid in the bible you don't find hepatitis in the bible because that that level of civilization had not come until one day you find out that that thing you call fibroid now has a head now has a hand now is a human it can come out that thing does not stay for nine months use your brain to think of what it is that after nine months it is not willing to come out hmm. Hmm. there are people today with hiv it's not that they slept anywhere i remember praying for one woman years ago and this woman told me that someone came in the night i've told you who that someone is there is a generation it's not always satan 
whether they meet you in the realm of the spirit or in the physical, it makes no difference. Came with a syringe and said, this syringe is an HIV virus and injected her with it. And she woke up in the physical realm and then started getting sick. Went to the hospital. You will look at that woman now and think, Madam, you are not faithful to your husband. But that's it. That virus. The best medicine can do is to administer antiretrovirals. But the cause of that thing, you see, is not human. The cause of cancer is not human. Huh? Doctors, learn this. When you understand this, you will see miracles in the hospital that will surprise you. Cancer, HIV. Now you see all kinds of diseases. Stemo. There are all kinds of names. And people just know that they found the first person with the disease. They don't know where it came from. The only thing they can ask the person is, where, what village are you from? They go and study the trees and the plants. Is there a lion in your village? Is there a monkey? Did you ever live with it? Did you give up? Forget all those things. I'm telling you where this thing came from. It comes from the spirit. Something about this seed of the serpent does something to the womb of a woman. Does something to the race of men. And it will continue to advance until the people who will arise because there is still a prophecy there and this is the prophecy that will be the basis of our prayer the seed of the woman shall bruise shall bruise shall bruise that the only entity on earth capable of stopping this agenda is whoever proceeds as the seed of that woman are we together now yes so Jesus proceeded as that seed but then in him now his offsprings that's why he said in Luke 10 19 he said behold I give you power to tread upon I, he didn't say upon witches I give you power go back to Genesis and see what the power should do to tread. there is an old story serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemies why will jesus use serpents and scorpions the disciples understood they never said jesus what is serpent what is scorpion ah -ah. he's not talking about that thing you catch he knew what he was saying he said there is an agenda there is a generation of the serpent anywhere you see them there is an anointing upon you you can crush them The seed of the woman Satan has already bruised the heel of the church enough because there are people who have died there are people who have suffered casualties but God is dependent on the seed of the woman to fulfill this prophecy it's a mystery in Revelation that mystery was reacted again that a woman was pregnant with a man child and Satan left everything that dragon and was waiting to see the child so that he will eat the child and the Bible says that that the wind carried the woman to a safe place so she can give birth to that man child safely and that man child is Christ and the Bible says in Galatians 3:29 that if ye be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs heirs part of those who will crush his head Part of those who will crush him in your family. Listen. You will be fooling yourself to imagine there is no representation of that generation in your lineage. It, it will be, it will be a, a joke and flattery beyond your imagination. They are everywhere. Are we together? They don't die fast. They don't get old. When they are getting old, they exchange human beings to elongate their own life. They sit down and keep watching the rising of men and the falling. They are not human beings. If they were possessed, we can deliver them and intercede for them. Let me tell you this. There are people you will sit down interceding for their salvation. And God will tell you, don't waste your time. You don't know what species these people are coming from. You will think that you didn't hear God well. God will say, look, I am telling you this. Don't waste your time. Hey. 
Listen. Did you notice that Jesus never preached to the scribes and the Pharisees? The only one of them he preached the gospel to was Nicodemus. Why? Every time he met every other person, he spoke to them about the kingdom. The crowds, the kingdom. But when he saw them, it was always insult. You brood of vipers. It started from John the Baptist. He never called them human beings. He said, you are vipers. What is a viper? Is it a human being? You appear as if you are human beings. When he was eating with the people, they were always in his crusades. Yet he never paid. I saw the way it disturbed me for a long time how unmerciful Jesus was to these people. Not once did he preach any gospel to any of them. Destroyers of his ministry. Every time they saw kindness, everybody was happy except them. Notice they were the only ones who got angry at everything good. It was a group of them. We are going to pray. Oh. We are going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. I'm not a killer. I don't kill. But I know that I've been instructed to crush the head of any generation that is not human. If you're offended, you can go home. Come tomorrow, I'll talk about favor later on and other things you like. But this night, if it is to rise, huh? if it is to rise in power and in life, then let me tell you, there is a generation, it is not repentance. It's not, oh God, touch their heart. If they don't repent, no, there's nothing about repentance there. These are not human beings. There's no preaching the gospel for salvation. Are we together? When they saw Jesus casting out devils, they looked at him and said, this is Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And he said, ah, if you call me Beelzebub, then by who do your fathers? So there were other people casting out spirits by another agency, not Jesus. There were strange people in the Bible who were destroyed. There were other people that God would go out of his way to preach to. But there were others that land, there was no salvation. Are you ready to pray? Tonight is a very simple prayer. If you don't know what to pray, just pray in tongues. But we are going to pray. Listen to me. Listen to me. There is a name that the Nephilims are called two names that will constitute our prayer tonight one they are called watchers do you know what watchers are ah huh? it is the offspring of these that were called familiar spirits their assignment is to study the growth of people within a territory and make sure that there is a limitation as covenanted they are called watchers not watchmen watchers Should I give you an example of those kinds of wicked spirits? Although in this case he was not one of the Nephilims, but they called him a madman. But that madman went to stay in a strategic cave. When Jesus was going to the other side, the spirit said, go and meet him. Who told the madman Jesus was coming? As soon as Jesus got there, here was a madman looking at him. And the demons start to speak. Have you come to destroy us? We know you are coming to liberate this territory. But we are the watchers over this territory. The moment Jesus casted them out, immediately, somebody's business went down. Immediately. And it made them to drive Jesus out of town. They said, Jesus, leave, leave. Please leave. You are making us lose here. This place. Number two, they are called gatekeepers. You know what a gate is? It's the mystery of access that opens you up to a, whether to, to healing, to grace, to anointing. There are families whose destiny are under the keys of gatekeepers. They are not humans. They sit down and manipulate the destinies of families. Please pray, oh. 
when it's time to pray, it's a few minutes, but pray. Are we together? They are the ones who study all the graduates. Five people, the only person that graduates, they now kill him. And you will think it's a mistake. The gatekeepers. But tonight, ha! Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. And the seed of the woman. Shake up a kata. Shake a tekete. Let a paroka. Shabarat. Hallelujah. Listen, the watchers, they make sure that the ordinances spoken over territories remain so. So they declare over this territory, no woman marries a good man. Why? Because a good man with her will produce a good child. And that child can be an evangelist that will change that land. So they are watchers. The moment, how many of you have seen that somebody just says, I love you, something happens. It's like a report sent in the spirit. Immediately. And something happens. Immediately. I want to give you a job. And all of a sudden, the waters. Lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command. I command the sword of vengeance. The sword of vengeance upon every entity. Upon every entity. Manipulating my destiny. Manipulating my destiny. Manipulating my family. Lift your voice and pray.
holding the keys, holding the keys, keys to their next level, to their next level, level. level. by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I, 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 I command the gates open now. I command the gates I tell you whether you understand what I'm saying or not. The Lord just showed me something now, and we're going to pray. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus. In the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Every door, every, every door, door that has given Satan access, that has given Satan access, 
to visit me to visit me in dream and encounters in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I declare I declare that door is closed now that door is closed Hallelujah. We are still going to pray. Something is happening. You will see the testimonies that will come up from tonight's prayer. We are still praying. Listen. They come to you in the night and try to molest you. They try to sleep with you. They try to press you. They come as animals. They use the faces of men you know. They are not humans. They are waters. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Every stranger. Every stranger. Oppressing me at night. Oppressing me at night. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. I break your hold over my life. I break your hold over my life. I break your hold over my life. Hallelujah. Just two more prayers and we are done tonight. Listen. One of the greatest areas, hear me, fire is burning in this place, I tell you. One of the greatest activities of these entities is to stop the gospel from reaching your home. You can preach to others, you can be holding crusades, raising wheelchairs, but if that gospel nears your compound, here they come. They are watchers. You can preach to anyone else, sing to anyone else. But if that thing comes near your compound, are you ready to pray? In the name of Jesus. In the, in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus I declare. I, I declare, declare that the gospel, that the, the gospel, gospel of salvation, of salvation, of healing, of healing, of restoration, of restoration, reaches all my loved ones. Reaches all my loved ones right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. This last prayer point, even if you have not prayed anything tonight, I'm going to give you a few minutes to really pray. Are we together? Aside from the gospel, the greatest area of attack of these entities is marriage and family love. Listen to me. If they cannot stop you from settling down, they stop fruitfulness. Or they plant something in your child. You give birth to a child who becomes something else. It's not normal. We are going to pray. Listen, every sister here, when it's time to pray, lay your hands on your womb. Listen, and blast in tongues and pray. I will not give birth to an entity that is another spirit. 
Apostle James said that when you want a body to stop functioning, remove the spirit in the body. These entities are combinations of spirits and bodies. There is a strategy for stopping their function. I decree and declare in the name that is above all names that if there is any of those entities, please listen, I'm praying now. I'm seeing fire falling on people. That if there is any entity, whether in our villages or our homes, that is not a pure human, sent by darkness, right now, I cause a separation between their spirits and their bodies. Amen! I cause a separation between their Amen! spirits and their bodies. I command the earth to open and swallow them. Amen! I command the earth to open and swallow them. I command the earth to open and swallow them.
Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. If there is anything that your family should have handled today, I don't care whether it's position of influence. There are some of you where you are, with your love for God, you should not be at that level now. But there is something programming your remaining there. Can I prophesy a lifting for somebody? In the name of Jesus, tonight by this grace and unction, I declare to you, every entity holding you down, may the grace swallow them now. Every entity holding you down, may the grace swallow them now. Amen. Therefore, I prophesy to you, beginning from tonight, Rise to a level you have never seen. Rise to a new dimension of influence. Rise to a new dimension of power. Hallelujah. Can I prophesy over your finances? Yes, sir. Do you believe it? The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. He said, believe in his prophets. Don't mind this, our arrogant generation. That will not listen to the word. Are we together? Let me tell you something. There is something called sovereign wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. In the name of Jesus. I speak to you. By this time. Tomorrow. I'm saying. If you have the faith to receive. I stand in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. By this time tomorrow, may my God surprise you. By this time tomorrow, I prophesy to you, I shift things, I shift wealth to you from the realm of the Spirit. I command strangers, I seize their sleep. May they bless you. I instruct them. I set it as an ordinance in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit. Listen. You will be surprised at the testimonies you hear tomorrow. Some of you, you will be minding yourself after the grace, just walking home. And before you reach home, you are already crying for joy and saying, what is this? What is this? Listen, if you can receive for your family, I stretch my hands. Some of them think you are wasting your time coming every day. But may my God give them a sign tonight. May my God surprise them with a sign tonight. A sign that will bring them by themselves tomorrow. May my God give them a sign tonight. Listen. Listen, let me tell you something. We're rounding up. You see, before you believe a man, go and find out his track record. Don't just believe foolishly. Ask questions. This person talking like this, as he said it before, and what happened? The Bible says he confirmed the words of his messengers. It's not pride. It's the truth. This seven days was designed to change us. Listen, tomorrow I'm going to give you some instructions. Huh? By Friday... You are going to carry your documents and the rest and come with it. Let me see the devil. Let me see the principality. Except it is not God that ordained this ministry. You will see what my God will do. There must come a time in your life where God will shift you. If you don't shift, it's your fault. Too. Let me tell you this. Hallelujah. I'm praying over finances. We're rounding up already. I, I didn't plan to talk about this. 
but the Lord just put it in my spirit. It's not so that you come and so please don't come out here if you don't know what you are doing. Please. It's, it's, not, it's not a ritual. We are not playing games here. But I want to pray for people who can believe. This man you see standing before you by his grace is a steward of the mysteries of God. The Bible says let every man minister according to the measure of grace. Do you understand? I can look at someone and say take 10 naira from my pocket. This is me, a man. Talk more the God of heaven. But he's helpless until someone declares. Please, just believe me once. I beg you in the name of Jesus this night. Just be, You can insult me if it doesn't happen. But just believe. I want to pray again for your finances. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and I ask my God the God who has taken me by His grace, the God who took this ministry by His grace, I stand before His altar and I program a climate of strange favor over your life. I program a climate of strange favor over your life. I program a climate. Don't ask where it will come from. You will not see the wind. You will not see rain. But I program a climate of strange favor over your life. If there is anything anyone has stolen from you, I'm prophesying. Some of you will go back home and find it there. Nobody brought it. In the name of Jesus, you will go back home and find it waiting for you there. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're rounding up. Father, bless your people tonight. In the name of Jesus. Please don't fail to testify. Your testimonies will build the faith of others. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please, just, just a little announcement and we'll share the grace. Don't come alone. Everywhere is already filled. We're even praying that God will grant us grace. But this is not just, there are some of you as I'm praying, you know people who are struggling. It's, it's not just about finances. God has opened a portal over the land to bring people into an experience. Don't be selfish. This is not about ministry. This is not a koinonia thing. God is opening an opportunity for people to pray. That's number one. Number two, when you go back home, don't just roam around till evening, then you carry your Bible and come. This mystery, pray it. You will wake up tomorrow and share with your friends the kind of dreams and encounters you will have tonight. Some of you will have dreams where you will see individuals waving you and saying, this is it. It's over. And you will wake up and see your life change. Hallelujah. It's a ministry of signs and wonders. I bless you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord increase and multiply you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we desire you. This is why we are here tonight. We are here because we mean business with you. Lord, I pray tonight that you will give us all kinds of encounters in this place. I pray that your word will come with power. I pray that you will make us, you will equip us, you will empower us. Oh, and let the anointing of your spirit be strong and mighty in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you. Let the name of Jesus be exalted. Father, we thank you. Your presence is truly heavenly. We honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Walk up to ten people, greet them. 
tell them God bless you in your language. Go ahead, ten people. Don't talk in tongues. Some of you are pretending that you don't know your language. You know it. <laughs> who have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Some of you, the way you were twisting your tongues, I was wondering what you were saying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your name on the song you want me to go. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. Everyone is a musician tonight. Go ahead. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
have a very powerful teaching tonight. I believe that it will bless us as we prepare for what God will be doing um, next week at the October Miracle Service. We have a lot of expectations and we know that God will visit us in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. One of my one of my passions um, as I teach and open up the body of Christ to the principles of the kingdom. One of my passions is to bring believers to an accurate understanding of the principles of the kingdom. Because I have learned both from the word and by experience that our victory in this kingdom is highly dependent on our comprehension of the way the kingdom works. Hallelujah. So it is possible that you can be a Christian, you can be born again, you can even be filled with the Holy Spirit. But then you find yourself innocently walking against the purposes of God for your life. Hallelujah. Many times we see from scripture that this has been a possibility. That men out of ignorance can partner with the devil to walk against their own life. So, as I attempt to teach um, believers on the principles of the kingdom, I like to bring us to a point where we realize, I've said this again and again, that in the kingdom, the kingdom is made up of systems. And then there are responsibilities. Hallelujah. It's not all up to God. Please listen to me tonight. And it's not all up to you. Meaning that it is a partnership. That's why we call this meeting koinonia. Intimacy and partnership. That if anything will ever be done in this kingdom and done in your life and destiny, there is going to be a point where you and God will play mutual roles. Are you getting what I'm saying? Come on, Ken. If I am God and Ken is a man, one who seeks to see the hand of God in his life, if you do not know that you have a role to play, listen please, if you do not know that you have a role to play, you may not know how to align yourself if this is what he desires, right? And according to the laws of God, I'm supposed to give this to him as God. But if he does not know that he has a responsibility to align to receive it, he can stay for years and while I'm trying to give it to him because of his inability to understand what he should do to walk in the reality of this, he may never have it. Hallelujah. And so there is, there is always a dimension in the kingdom where man must play his responsibility, his role. Right? And then there is God's own part. And I found out that God is ever faithful. The truth is that many times the problem is never from God's end. The problem is either our not understanding what to do or refusing to do it even when we understand. Hallelujah. So ignorance and disobedience Two great dangers as far as um, walking with God is concerned. Bless you. So tonight, I want to share a thought with us very briefly and then we'll pray. I know that God wants to do great things next week. We've had miracle services again and again. And I don't just want it to become one of those miracle services again. I truly believe that if we can align ourselves and know what to do, we can partner with God to bring dramatic breakthroughs to our lives. If you believe that, say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. First, Second Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 4 and 5, I'm teaching tonight on pulling down strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. We're going to be examining the concept of strongholds and mindsets. The goal of this brief teaching tonight is to open us up to our own side of the equation. How that many of us probably 
may be fighting against our own destinies by not knowing that our mindset and the strongholds that the enemy can pause over our mind can even limit God in our lives. Second Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 10, from verse 4 to 5. Hallelujah. It's projected, so I'd like us to read. Let's hurry up. One to read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stop. The Bible gives us an idea that these strongholds can be pulled down. It says the weapons of our warfare, they are not fleshly, they are not man-made. Right? They are not carnal. But they are mighty through God and it can help us to pull down strongholds. Hallelujah. Please write. A stronghold a stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception. A stronghold is a sustained comma, faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception. A sustained pattern based on lies and deception, often enforced by the presence of demon spirits. Often enforced by the presence of demon spirits. Are we following tonight? Praise the Lord. Now, I've always talked about this issue of mindset and pattern. Because believers have not yet been opened to see the extent of the damage that a wrong mindset can cause to their lives and their destinies. Let me define the word mindset so that we can tie it up together before I begin to teach. I've taught it again and again, but I've found out that repetition is the key to persuasion. When people keep hearing a thing again and again, they suddenly build trust over that thing. What is a mindset? A mindset is an ideology. A mindset is an ideology. It's a value system. A mindset is a way of thinking. So when we talk about mindsets, we talk about ideologies. Everyone say ideologies. We talk about value systems. Say value systems. Now it is very, very important. Because when God wants to work with a man, there are a number of challenges that he can face. And one of the greatest, in my opinion, is the subject of mindsets and strongholds. I wrote here that when demons fortify a mindset and use it as their gateway into a person's life, the mindset becomes a stronghold. Are you getting that now? I'll take it again. I'm reading it because I want you to write it down. When demons fortify a mindset, an ideology, a thinking pattern and use it as their gateway into a person's life, that mindset is called a stronghold. That means a stronghold is a mindset that has been crystallized by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the person consistently thinks that way. One of the things I've learned about mindset is that mindsets are gates and doors in the spirit realm. Absolutely. Gates and doors that can authorize the entrance of the word of God of God and, uh, and the things of the kingdom or authorize the operations of demons in people's lives. Please follow me very carefully because God wants to set us free. 
when demons fortify a mindset and they use it as their gateway into a person's life, that mindset becomes a stronghold. See, the Bible tells us not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. The word device is there is the word stratomai. That means his strategy. The strength of Satan is not in an ability he has in himself. The strength of Satan is the advantage of spiritual knowledge that he knows. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's not like Satan is powerful as a person. His power is based on the advantage that he was the custodian of the revelations of the kingdom. And although he was thrown down, he still has that knowledge. So there are too many pathways that he can navigate in the spirit to get to a man's life. That's what becomes the strength of Satan. Are you following what I'm saying now? So Satan is very, is very smart because he, he has knowledge of different pathways to access a believer's life. And if we do not know how to shut these doors against him, our Christian experience may be barren and we may never truly fulfill destiny. Are we getting blessed? Strongholds. Mindsets. I wrote a few thoughts about mindsets and let's write them down. Mindsets are gates, I've said that, and doorways in the spirit. They permit the operation of the Holy Spirit or the, the operation of demons. Mindset. There are gates and there are doors in the spirit realm. That means when Satan freely accesses a man's life, there is a stronghold that authorizes his operation in that person's life. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit seems to find expression in a person's life, among other things, there is also a stronghold, a mindset. That permits his operation. Number two. A man's life is directly. Or the quality. The quality of a man's life. Is directly tied to his mindset. Absolutely true. Proverbs 23 verse 7. It says. As a man thinketh in his heart. He equates your life. To your thought pattern. Your mindset. The quality of a man's life, the quality of my life and your life, spiritually, financially, and otherwise, the quality of my life is highly dependent on my mindset. The Bible here says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh, that means that your life revolves around your ideology. Please, are we learning something tonight? That means, God can never change your life until He does something about your mindset. Your life is the child that your mindset is birthing or has birthed. And it will continue to birth rubbish according to what is inside until there is a change. Another thing I said about mindset is that mindset define our limits and possibilities in life. Mindset define our limits and our possibilities in life. Shiva Kato Labaradabos. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. Mindset define our limits. That means your limitation in life is according to your mindset. And your possibilities in life are also according to your mindset. That's the reason why you can have two people same people, but there are possibilities that one may be able to do and the other one may not be able to step in. The Bible says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth what? That which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We talk a lot about words and the creative power of spoken words. But words don't just evolve themselves like that. They are products of ideologies. Men speak according to their perceptions. 
about God, about life, about themselves, about their destinies. Hallelujah. Another thing I want you to know about mindset is that a man's mindset can limit God in his life. Very serious issue. As mighty as God is, as great as God is, a man's mindset can limit the operation of God in his life. Psalm 78, verse 41. Let's look at something very interesting there. The psalmist was writing about the nation of Israel with Moses. Psalm 78, verse 41. God speaking to anybody. He said, Yea, they turned back and tempted God. And they did what? They limited the Holy One. A man can limit God in his life. A man can make God look small in his life. How did they limit God? Let's go to verse 19 and 20. Verse 19 and 20 tells us how they limited God. Still the same Psalm 78. Please let's hurry up. I have a lot to talk about and then I want us to pray. There is so much that God wants to do in our lives. Let's read verse 19. Want to read. Yea, they speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? So while they were in the wilderness, they said, does God have that up? Yes, I know God is mighty. But based on what I know about him, is he that mighty to make a table in the wilderness? Verse 20. Behold, he smote the rock. I've seen that one. I know he did it. And the waters gushed out. And the streams overflowed. But can he give bread also? Yes, I know that he did this. He healed cancer. But can he really heal HIV? Can he provide meat or flesh for the people? Okay, I understand the logic between water and rock. Maybe some scientific things happen and he just took advantage of science. Amazing. The Bible says they limited God. That means God wanted to do many things. He wanted to show his outstretched arm. Over the nation of Israel. But their mindset limited him. There are many of us here in this place. That if only we could align. It would be amazing how far God can stretch his hand upon our lives. And do wonders in and through our lives. But that one limitation. Mindset. And over time, that ideology has become prolonged. When demons came, they saw that this mindset is the exact doorway that they need to your life. And they fortified it. You know what it means to fortify it? That means to build a fence around it. To make sure that this becomes your thinking pattern no matter what happens. Are you getting what I'm saying? When a man is suffering from a stronghold, even when you share the word of God, you bring that word and subject it to your mindset. And the activities of this spirit make you to resist the possibility that the word of God offers. How are mindsets formed? How do we get this mindset? Number one, culture. Culture. I think it was the school of ministry students or the final year people were talking and then we, we talked on this too. Culture. There are ideologies that we have adopted because of where we are coming from. Our cultural values. Right? And it's not every part of culture that is wrong. But there are certain aspects of culture that are occultic, they are wrong, they are demonic, and we, you know, we grew up knowing it to be the norm. And we have adopted it. When we gave our lives to Christ, we didn't divorce from it. We incorporated it as part of our Christian experience. And so, although we are born again, those mindsets still remain doorways. God speaking to anyone tonight. Culture. The influence of culture. 
we have all kinds of tribes in Nigeria with their history. Is that true? We have people from down south, west, middle belt, north, and all of that. We have people from the extreme north. We have the Yorubas, the Igbos, south, south, Hausa people, middle belters, and all of us have all kinds of history about our culture. Is that true? And can I tell you the truth? The way you are looking at me right now, many of you, you love God, you are born again, but the devil can sing choruses in and out of your life without restraint because there is a part of culture that some of us have refused to let go. There are, it's amazing, as young as we are, there are some of us that your, your, your love and affinity towards culture is very disturbing. As young as you are, when it comes to culture, you behave as if you are 70 years old. It must be done culturally. As young as you are, and you wonder, my goodness, what happened to this person? Hallelujah. Cultural influences. They have defined our perception about God. They have defined our perception about marriage. Is that true? They have defined our perception about ministry. There are all kinds of men of God doing ministry in Nigeria. And when you look at the ministry, you see culture following the ministry too. There are aspects of culture that will never leave because we have allowed it. And for many of us, now there are very positive aspects of culture. Morality, respect, and so on and so forth. But I'm telling you, there are, culture was designed largely to accommodate the operation of demons and spirits. Are you aware of that? And many of us are given that template. And the devil's strategy is this. He says, become a Christian. You can become a Christian. I'm not stopping you. But I want you to go together with that. Take two of them. So you can be praying in tongues while I enter and wreak havoc in your life. Hallelujah. So it is possible to find a Christian right now. The moment there is stomach pain, he just remembers that there's there's one special kind of of concoction. Now I'm not just talking about um, your ability to discern trees that heal. That one, you know that there are things that you add to it. So the, the man of God is born again. But under certain situations. Huh? When you find out that they are not giving you the job, after service you just call somebody and say, there's nothing we can do about it. What they are saying is, ah, Let's go to the other way. Culture. Everybody say culture. Till today, there are many, for instance, many tribes and many territories across Nigeria that part of the rights that lead to marriage are largely occultic and devilish. Are you getting me? In fact, others they do certain direct devilish things. You know it. You know that this is invoking a spirit to come and guide you. Someone once told me about, I won't mention where the person is from, but then they told me that there is a spirit that they invoke when they are about to get married and he goes with the family. You understand? To make sure that they are protected. And this is how our forefathers, many of us, let me tell you, as you are laughing, I hope you know that Every single tribe, tongue, nation, and territory in this country has contributed our share of permitting demons because of our culture. I schooled at a particular place. Um, careful. I schooled at a particular place in, in Plateau State, and um, they had masquerades. Praise God. Can you still hear me? Are you with me? They had masquerades. And it was said that one of the masquerades, that the guy had authority to command bees. Bees. So, if you did something wrong, and they go and invoke the power of those masquerades, you will just be walking on the street, and all of a sudden, you will find out that untold amounts of bees will just come and invade you, and, in, and the sting, you know that the sting is not just a normal sting of bees. Because it's occultic. Everybody say culture. There are some of us, for instance, 
Before your parents release you to come to school or do anything, they tell you there is a particular right or cultural right that you must be engaging. Am I being sincere tonight? Hallelujah. And now, for some of us, or many of us, in innocence, we have opened up ourselves and allowed these things to shape our mindset. I know many cultures where when they give birth to children, they take the children to all kinds of places and they have some, some kind of fraternity with demonic spirits to protect and, and, and guide the children. And the demons will seemingly protect the children. But then it is at the expense of the destiny of that child. Everyone say culture. Number two. Mindsets are formed as a result of past experiences. You can put on your phone to just help you as you write. Past experiences. Whether good or bad, your experiences in life, it has a way of um, creating a mindset in you. I'll give you an instance. A lady who was probably abused growing up. Hallelujah. Maybe molested by a pastor or her relative or somebody may grow up having a mindset that all men are devils. All men are destructive, whether they are born again or not. In fact, there are still some of you sitting down right now. Probably you had three or four or five or more relationships. And maybe most of those relationships are with believers. But then at the end of it, you've had one disappointment or the other. And on the strength of those experiences, you have been able to draw what you call a logical conclusion. That all men are wicked. It's just that some are more wicked than others. All are wicked. You see that? So, when God wants to do great things in your life, something comes to limit you. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Number three, your mindset is formed by your level of exposure. Level of exposure. Thank you. I think I'm good. I'm okay. Your level of exposure. That means, now not to insult you, but if you grew up in the village, Entirely in the village. You've not had any kind of uh, exposure. You grew up in the village. There are certain possibilities that exist in the village. Right? And you may not know that life can be lived at a higher level. Is that true? So you may be old, but the truth is that there is an ideology that you take along. Your level of exposure. There are people, for instance, who growing up, they never serve them food in their own plate. You know this kind of communal, these families with many children, especially polygamous families, they now say food is ready. Food is ready means secure your spot. Just find somewhere and sit down. Because whatever is a big, big plate, and wherever you can, if you, if you are strategic enough, good for you for that night. If you are late, bad for you for that night. I follow me now. So, when those kinds of people are growing, it affects their concept of kindness. It affects their concept of generosity. Are you getting me? When you see someone carry a hamper, a Christmas hamper to bless somebody, say, ah, this is too much. Ah! I mean, how can you lavish everything just on one person? Because all through growing up, you shared everything plus your clothes. There was nothing you ever had that you were blessed with and you said, this is my own. Mindset. Hallelujah. There are families, for instance, where father, mother, children all slept in the same room. Correct? 
Once it's night, everybody secures a very strategic area. Those who put two chairs together, those who put mat outside, huh? those who squeeze and do all kinds of things, mindsets. And so it affects you. Now, while you are laughing, I hope that you are, you are seeing how that mindsets are formed. Your level of exposure. And now, the danger is that if you, you are bankrupt in terms of exposure, if you are not careful, when God now begins to expose you, huh, you will push yourself into some unnecessary exposure that will be swinging to the other side of the pendulum. Have you seen people like that? People who you never... You never would have been able to afford a shoe of 1,000. Now you are in a relationship with somebody and he bought you a shoe of 20,000 and say, no, my standard is more than this. You see the other side of the mindset. All your life you use shoe of 1,500, highest. Now you have a shoe of 20, you say, no, 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 no. I suffered growing up. I must make up for this thing. Mindset. Is God speaking to us? Number four, your association. Mindsets are formed um, based on your association. If you've lived your entire life having wicked people, heartless people, bad brothers who bullied you, beat you up, you went to school, you had seniors who beat you up, bullied you, it creates a sense of complex and inferiority and many things happen to you. Associations. There are many people who became Christians easily because while they were growing up, they were surrounded by genuine people. Look at our little baby now, um, Faith. Our little baby in Koinonia. Imagine how this lady will begin to think I was having a fixed class with the school of ministry students. And then while we were praying, praise God, while we were praying, I watched the little girl. She was praying in tongues and just moving. When they lift their hands, she would lift her hands. Mindset. Because of our association. That lady at age 5 or 6 will think like somebody at age 8. Because she has been relating with adults. That's how some of you, you are 17, but your mind is, is 41. Because all through, you never had a mate. All your mates, you didn't have mates. Your, the, your friends were ten times older than you. So you joke their joke at their level. So now that you are with your friends, where you talk, they say, ah, bro, how old are you? Mind, have you seen people like that? Even the way they walk. You see the person walking and you're like, my brother, it's all well. You say, I'm like that, oh please. Mindset. There are people when they crack jokes, they crack ancient proverbs. They can't crack anything, anything modern and contemporary. When other people are saying, you know, if wishes were horses, the guy would just come with one kind of thing. So when a, this and that happens, and you are looking at it and say, my brother, <laughs> the last time I read this was in one tribal dictionary. Where did you get it? That's all he's known all his life. Everyone say mindset. Your association. You grew up with your grandfather. You grew up with your grandmother. Their possibilities were your possibilities. Their jokes were your joke. You ate what they ate. Now they ask you what's your best food. You mention something nobody knows. Because all through... That, that's what you have been exposed to. Now follow me please. God is taking us somewhere this night. Number five. Your family background. Sadly if you grew up from a poor family. There is something it must have done to you. Must have done to you. No matter how godly or otherwise you are. If you grew up from a very wealthy family. If you grew up from a Christian family, there are some of us that grew up in polygamous families that are mixed. Is that true? Some were believers, some were non-believers. There are some of us that grew up in all kinds of family settings. And these things have created an impression in us. For instance, if you grew up in a polygamous family, 
based on what you saw growing up, you knew that your mother's side and your stepmother's side, everybody protected their own interests. Is that true? Now you come to ABU and your friends are saying, let's feel free. Say, no, I don't feel free. I, I protect and I guard my thing. And they're saying, no, we're innocent people. They fetch water for you, you refuse to use it to bath. And they say, uh-uh, we're all koinonia. They say, koinonia, wickedness is real. You see, a mindset. You came back and you saw that your roommate fetched your food. You say, God forbid, I will eat again. Because that's what happened probably between your stepmom and your mom. So you just felt that, uh uh-uh, the moment you are sick, you are suspecting all your roommates. Who is doing this? Somebody in this room, a man's enemies are the people. In your mind, you are talking about your own house. Mindset. To an extent that even when you say God has blessed you with something and they say we rejoice with you, you get angry. Because you are used to it. When they said they rejoice with your mother, that thing scattered. So now they say they rejoice with you. You say you rejoice. I'm saying I'm marrying. I'm getting married. And you say you are rejoicing with me. See, mindset. We have had unnecessary enemies because of our mindset. Family background can influence mindsets. Let's look at one more. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your failure and your limitations in life can build a mindset in you. Failure and limitations in life. You probably wrote jam ten times before you got admission. Praise God. Or some kinds of things. Maybe you had to write Wyatt many times. Or when you were in primary school, you had to repeat. Or secondary school. All these things are mind builders. They create mindsets in us. Now, the danger is this. Please look up. The danger is this. That mindset creates your picture about what you perceive life to be. Are you getting me? The mindsets that you have, they are like, they are like paint brushes. So, they can paint to you a picture of what the world looks like. A picture of what friendship looks like. In fact, a picture of what God looks like. You probably trusted God for something. Trusted God as a family. Nothing happened. And the worst of all happened. And then another one happened. Maybe a tragic event. And then another one happened. And then another one happened. Have you seen parents that when you say, God is faithful, they just say, God? Who are you talking about? God? Which God? Where was God when they were driving me out of my house? Where was God when maybe my wife or husband was dying? Have you heard people like that? Where was God when my child was dying of cancer? So, because of their failures and their limitations, it has created a mindset about God. So, when you sing all these songs about the faithfulness of God, and you read scriptures like, Since I was um, young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. That man will say the psalmist lied. Because there is nothing in his life to verify that that is true. Hallelujah. And so you now compose a song with that scripture and the person calls you a liar because he says, God, there there are people today that believe in anything that works. Whether it's God, an idol, because they believe that, look, if you depend on God alone, you will fail. So add whatever works. And that was the whole concept of the Egyptian, Egyptian religion. They have many gods. Because they believed that gods were limited. So one had a unique grace for, f- for fertility. Another one had grace for um, um, protection. Another one had grace for wisdom and oratory. So they believed that when you serve all of those gods, you will have the complete picture of a good life. Now look at me. Did you realize that your understanding about life today, your understanding about God, 
and your level of impact and breakthrough in life has largely been limited by your mindset. And for some of us, it's no longer a mindset. It has become a stronghold. Why has it become a stronghold? Because demons saw that mindset. And they saw that this is the exact kind of mindset that permits their operation in an area of your life. So they came and fortified that mindset to make sure that you do not even realize there is a problem with it. Hallelujah. So every time God wants to do great things in your life, those strongholds limit Him. God wants to make you prosperous, those strongholds limit Him. God wants to heal and bless you. Those strongholds limit Him. God wants to take you from glory to glory. Those strongholds limit Him. God wants to give you a good husband, a good wife, a good job. God wants you to excel and break limits. But those mindsets limit Him. There are many people who may never enjoy a good home because there are poisonous strongholds that they have. About, about fatherhood, motherhood, parenting, and so on and so forth. There are some of us right now, we don't have any friend in our lives. The truth is there are no friends. All the friends that we have are just our regular church people who just, just because of our connection. But we don't have destiny friends. And the reason is our mindset. There are some of us, you fight with everybody you come across with. Once you are friends with the person, after two weeks, you are already fighting. Something about your mindset keeps telling you that everybody hates you. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have settled down and we have believed that we will never amount to anything in life. Why? Because family background, culture, everyone in your family was a failure. The richest man in your family was a carpenter. And he probably had a bike. That's it. So it's a mindset. Out of the 20 or 30 people in your extended family, nobody has risen past secondary school. A mindset. And you have accepted it. So even when you push through to, to get a degree, you say, even if I don't get a job, I've tried. After all, I'm better than these ones that stop there. Whereas God wants to take you to the nations. Everyone shout, change my mindset, oh Lord. Shout it one more time. Change my mindset, oh Lord. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest deliverance that can happen to a man is not just that demons are casted out, but that, that there is a change, a reconfiguration of your mindset. Such that you authorize heaven to now begin to carry out only the things that are consistent with the word of God in your, in your life. I look at people, I've had the privilege of traveling to many places in this country. And when I travel... I like studying the culture and the ideology of the people. And oftentimes when we travel, if we are spending more than a day or two, they usually take us on a tour around the major areas of the city. They show us different things and all of that. And I have been amazed. I have been shocked and sometimes surprised at the ideologies that can be across a territory. Let me give you one. Um, in 2007, when I was in Port Harcourt, when I got there for the first two or three weeks, I was laughing every day. And the reason was because I have never seen that a man can be angry and slap your car. Are you getting that now? I mean, you push somebody and he's angry and then he slaps your car. Boom! The metal oh. And to him, he believes that that slap is supposed to have gotten to you. I said, my goodness. You slap a metal, your hand is paining you, the person in front does not realize, and it's supposed to be a communication of your pain. Same mindset. 
Number two, Lagos. I have always wondered how a man will rush and hurry his life like that. I mean, you hurry your life, almost enjoying yourself. You are trying to drop, trying to climb. And in the midst of the car, there is someone preaching. Praise the Lord. Oh, single, single. And somebody is dropping. And they are hurrying up. And I'm wondering, my goodness, a combination of spirituality and foolishness coexisting? Mindset. Hallelujah. I went to a particular region in this country and I found out that it was the women that were on bike. As in bike, as in bike machine. My goodness. Yes, the ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies on bike. And I said, where are the men? How can a man buy bike and give his wife? I said, you know, go and farm or do whatever with it. Mindset. Could it be that there are certain things that God has wanted to achieve in your life this year, 2014, but up till now, your mindset has refused to give him entrance. Can I tell you something? Before we blame Satan over everything, I'm telling you now that Satan is not so powerful. The strength of Satan is the ability to build strongholds around your mindset. It's God blessing us. That's why you find out that there are people. Have you seen people you pray over their situation and nothing happens? Because the truth is, their mindset opposes that prayer. The Bible says that we can pull down these strongholds. We can pull down these strongholds. There are many people who demons have been casted out of them. Yet, their situation did not change. See that? It's not all about demons. There are strongholds that are resident within our minds. And tonight, God will grant us grace to deal with it. How do you pull down these strongholds? Let's look at it quickly. How do you pull down these strongholds? Seeing that they are destructive. Man of God, could it be that there is more God can do with your life and ministry? But your mindset, your mindset. I was teaching the school of ministry and I told them, the ministry students, I told them, I said, think world class. Think world class. You can start from Jerusalem, but don't die in Jerusalem. Jesus, listen, listen. They said this about Jesus. Nathaniel said, In John chapter 1, he said, can anything good come out of where? Let me me talk to you a bit before we talk about how to pull down strongholds. Let me tell you how familiar spirits operate. You know, have you heard about familiar spirits? Do you know how they operate? Let me tell you. A familiar spirit, right, is, is a spirit or there are groups of spirits that have dwelt at across a region for a very long time. They have studied the vulnerabilities of the people and built strongholds from their vulnerability. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have, they have over hundreds and probably thousands of years dwelt in a region. That's why they are called familiar. They understand everything about the lineage. They understand everything about that territory. And they have been able to study patterns. And they have found the best pattern that they can create a door out of. That's the reason why you find out that many territories have certain limitations. Is that true? There are tribes that their own, their own um, unbecoming is immorality. Is that true? There are tribes that their own is hatred. There are tribes that their own is anger. There are tribes that the men are careless. Is that true? Generally careless. Born again or not born again. The men are just careless. There are tribes and territories 
where in almost any every family you must find one or two daughters that um, may have a child before marriage. Is that true? There are other families that you, out of ten people, you may find only one that can sustain their marriage. Familiar spirits. They build strongholds across the vulnerabilities of territories and they use it as their extras. So, the man of God may be in ministry, but he has not dealt with these areas and he thinks it does not matter. And he finds out that although he's in ministry, that anger that surrounded his territory is still affecting him in ministry. And there are many doors. God will send partners to the ministries. He will drive them out because of anger. Are you seeing that now? How do you pull down these strongholds? Number one, you must first recognize and admit the need to take on a renewed Godly mindset. You will never, never receive the help of God if you do not recognize and admit that you need help. There are many arrogant people with messed up mindsets who will never accept that something is wrong with their ideologies. The first step to your deliverance, hear me, brothers and sisters, is not that hands are laid on you, is that you come to a point where you think about your life. And look at me. In the next one minute, I like everybody under the sound of my voice, think about your life. Is this the best? If you don't come to a point where you think about your life, you may die in that level forever. Think about your life. Why am I behaving the way I always behave? Why have I attracted all kinds of woes into my life? Is this the best of my destiny? Why is it that every man that comes into my life in two weeks, he will go away? Leave the issue of demons. They gave you a job. After two weeks, you fought with your superiors. They drove you. You went to another place. After two weeks, you fought with your superiors. The third one, the day they gave you the job, you slapped your boss. They said, this way, out, never come back again. Something is wrong. Some of us, our mindsets have driven all our destiny helpers. Oh, there are some of us, our mindset about money has kept us poor and will keep us poor forever. God will bless you with 10,000 naira. You carry all of that 10,000 naira, no tithing, no giving. You carry it and go and eat in a restaurant. You call your friends. Let's come and enjoy ourselves. Mindset. Because you think your respect and honor is based on the money you have. And that's what you got probably from culture. Are you getting my point now? So you think that you will be well respected and you go out of your way, make money only to carry it and spend it. Your concept of making money is to have something to spend. Because the more you spend, the more you are respected. Mindset. So you see a man who is working and earning 250000 but you will go to the village for Christmas or New Year, at the end of the year, and blow three million naira trying to impress people and come back broke and sell one of his cars only to begin the hard work again. After 40 years of working, he has not been able to do anything and live for his children. Everybody say mindset. There are some of us, we have mindsets and we believe through those mindsets that we can never do anything on our own. And that's the basis for your doing malpractice. You are born again. You are every, even this exam now. Some of you it has started. Some of you to start. There is a, a predetermination already. Malpractice, I must do it. It's just that it will not be as great as the last one. At least I've been hearing, but I must do it. For some of you, I will look for chokes, but if they bring it, I will refuse. Mindset. Have you not heard of parents organizing work? Huh? Wayek and jam. And flogging their children for not receiving the chokes. Mindset. Because they think that no matter what will happen, let the child just move forward. Their ego is at stake. And they don't care whether the child is understanding or he's moving legitimately or not. When we come into the kingdom, one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit 
is beginning to expose us to a point where we realize that the mindset we have at the moment is not sufficient to take us to the place where God wants to take us. How many of you can admit tonight that I, I want to take responsibility? Some of you, you have been blaming everybody from your father to your mother. You are blaming everybody. You are now blaming your friend. You are now blaming everybody. You will take that bad attitude and blame your husband and your wife. When children come, it will now be children. How many of us tonight can say, I take responsibility. My mindset needs upgrading. There's no denying it. See, let me tell you. When you come before God, you must be like a child. You must allow yourself. It's not your fault. Some of us, that's the reality you lived with all your life. Now God is challenging you. There are two groups of people in this place tonight. Those who will argue it and throw away what I'm saying and allow the devil to keep fortifying that mindset. And after 20, 30, 40 years, you'll find out that nothing has moved. I found out that time does not change things. New decisions bring new changes in life. For 38 years, a man was lying down at a pool called Bethesda. But in less than five minutes, when he did something differently from a renewed mindset, you know his problem? Anger and bitterness. Jesus said, what will I do for you? He said, no, every time I want to do this, all these people, and Jesus said, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. You have refused to move forward because you think your friend married the man who will be your husband. Ten years, they've given birth to five children. You are still there angry. They cannot even remember the events that happened. Say in this life, there are some people even in heaven, blah, 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 keep talking. They are moving. You are there dying. The devil has crystallized a mindset of hatred. There are some of us that hate our parents. It's true that they treated you bad. But you know that you must honor your parents for your days to be long. And now God is telling you, let go. So that you can take on something new. Me, God forbid. Mindset. God wants to take us to new levels. Brothers and sisters, there is no telling how far God is going to take you. Look at Joseph. Joseph had a dream. A great dream. To be a great man in life and destiny. He shared the dream with his brothers. And he paid dearly for it. After many years, he now became the prime minister in Egypt. And his brothers came. He would have been angry to hold on to that resentment. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine. But a broken spirit who can bear. There are some of us right now, God is speaking to you. There is a lot of forgiveness for you to do if you must rise up. You are angry with everybody. Now you, are, you have joined the group. You, you are now angry with yourself. Everybody you are angry with has moved forward. Only you. Now you are angry with yourself for being angry with everybody. I, I don't even like life. Let me even die. You see, that's the point. But tonight you are hearing the word of the Lord. It's time to lay that mindset down. Some of us, you've been carrying your village on your head. And it has been punishing you for decades. It's now time to drop that thing and say it's true. I am from so, so, so place, but I'm an ambassador of the kingdom. I need to change. Many of us have mindsets about money. Mindsets about marriage. Mindsets about God. Mindsets about everything. Some of us, because of our mindsets, you don't apologize. Because your mindset interprets apology as being cheap. So when you need to say, I'm sorry, you say, over my dead body. I'm sorry would have saved many people. Money, time, opportunities have been lost. Say, the way I am, I don't tell anybody I'm sorry. I don't look for anybody's thing. I don't care. And God is saying, apologize. Say, for what? Mindset. Who knows, maybe there are still some people here. You come for koinonia, but you don't talk to one another. I can't apologize. There are some of us mindsets 
have brought self-centeredness. Let everyone go to hell for as long as I'm doing well. It must benefit me first. When I'm satisfied, I now turn and I say, who is there? I had to change a lot of things. Oh my goodness. I had terrible mindsets. When I started working with God, I had gotten some of these mindsets from my upbringing. I got these mindsets from my failures of the past. I got these mindsets, but I knew that where God was taking me to. See, you cannot give God your terms for greatness. You must subscribe to His terms. Many of us want to be great, but you want to be great at your time. You say, Lord, these are my conditions. If you can bend to my little mold, that's your cup of tea. And God says, I am God. Do you know that something that has never been done in your family, you can be the first? But the question is, are you like the nation of Israel that has limited God? Sister, who told you God cannot use women? Who told you there cannot be women billionaires in your family? Everyone has suffered. You are planning to go and join them. I know one of our ladies in this place. They have a mindset in their family. She comes from a background where if you go to secondary school, just from a little, they just drag you and say, go and marry. You know there are backgrounds like that. They say, you have tried. Just three or SS1, that's good enough. Go and marry. And I know the lady and I've I've honored her resilience. This lady has gone through all kinds of pressure from family that she should go and marry. And the lady said, I want to go to the university. There's much that God wants to do. They made arrangement of one man for her. And they were trying to cajole her to go home so that he would pin her down. They would marry and she refused. Let me tell you, breaking out of your mindset is difficult. You will be misunderstood. Because you are breaking status quo. Some of you, when you want to do something, your parents say every end of the year, there is something we bow to. And you say, Daddy, I love you and I respect everyone, but I'm tired. I'm now a child of God. Your father will say, how old do you think you are? I bow to this thing to pay your school fees. Why didn't you reject the school fees? I bow to this thing to buy the Bible that you are using. You better go and bow. But who tonight will be able to say, Lord, I recognize a need for a change of mindset. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. If you break that barrier between you and your destiny, you will fly on the wings of eagles. I don't care how bad things are right now. It doesn't take time. It only takes you cooperating with the Lord. Say, Lord, In my village, nobody has done this. In my family, nobody has done this. But right now, I make up my mind to partner with the Holy Spirit. You may be one in a million, but you must be the first to stand up and arise and say, I'm going to break this status quo. This status quo of witchcraft. Everybody in your family has died at 30. You will need to change your mindset and say, no way. No way. My father's elder brother died at a particular age. My father's younger brother died at a particular age. When he was getting to that point, thank God that we had had some spiritual knowledge. And we prayed and we labored in the spirit. My father would have died in a miserable way. How to pull down strongholds. Number one, You must recognize and admit that you need a renewed godly mindset. You must. Every man that saw the mercy of God in his life had to come to a place where he broke down and humbled himself. God does not help arrogant people. If there is one thing that God does is to oppose the There are many of us, probably for the first time in your life, today will be the first time your pride will be broken. To say, Lord, finally, finally, I get down on my knees 
and I accept that my wrong mindset is the reason why I'm poor and broke. My wrong mindset may be the reason why I am not married. My wrong mindset is the reason why my ministry may not be growing. My wrong mindset may be the reason. See, if you break down, let it sting your ego and let it go and let God step into your life. You will never, I'm telling you this, you will never get the attention of God with the arrogant nature that many of us have. God, if you are available, please come down. I think uh, I may need you one or two areas. God is not like that. If my people who are called by my name, the first thing that happens is they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn, repent. Turn from their wicked ways. He said, then, not before, not during. Then, we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their lives. The hand of the Lord is not too short over our destinies. Many of us need to get to that point of humility tonight. I know you are a great evangelist, bishop, pastor, but tonight, break down your pride and say, Lord, I ask for mercy. There is something up here that is permitting the devil to wreck my life. I had to come to a point in my life where I said, Lord, don't let me be a fool forever. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. All the mindsets that authorize demonic activities in my life, take it away. I'm willing to pay whatever price. Who is ready to make that decision tonight? Oh, that's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. Nothing will ever change in your life. Nothing will ever change in your destiny. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming your father. Some of us are angry at where we are coming from. I wish I didn't come. Well, you are from there now. So you can as well calm down. You're already hoping that you will soon change your indigent certificate. That's not the issue. Indigent certificate will not change your destiny. When your mindset changes. Some of us have disowned our parents because they represent pictures of such failure you don't want to be associated with. The day you look at your... You have been telling everybody that your father is your uncle. It's time to tell the truth. Some of us have lied that our parents are abroad. They are not abroad. It's time to tell the truth. That man is my father. He may not have done well, but I will rise. What he could not eat, I will give him. Where he could not go, All this life of falsehood and lies and a fake impression of success will destroy us. We have to come to a point where we admit that there is something about our mindset. For some of us, it has become strongholds. You betray everybody that comes close to you. It's an attitude. It has never been an issue. You are a loving person. You love God, but you betray. You are not trustworthy at all. Any information they tell you is the same thing as telling a radio station. It's just like they took it to FM and said, let just tell the whole. And you are very happy. You are a pretty lady, but that's your own becoming. Every guy that comes after two weeks, he just does as if he's going to come back and disappear. Because every time they see that thing, the Bible says, Naaman was the captain of the army of Syria. 2 Kings 5. He said, but. We must deal with the bots in our lives tonight. And if you are unwilling to take responsibility, let me guarantee you, you will never see the hand of God. Number one. Lord, I recognize. I admit. That the quality of my life today is dependent on my decisions which have been products of my mindset. I may not have seen things accurately, but right now I ask you to help me. Number two. 
Number two, how to pull down strongholds. After admitting this, number two is casting out the demons that keep the faulty mindset. You must cast out those spirits that keep those mindsets. Because when a mindset has become a stronghold, a demon spirit is involved. You will never enter a man's house and spoil the goods until you bind the strong man. And casting out demons there involves number one, destroying their legal hold over your life. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Please listen to me. All these demon spirits and these principalities that leech over our destinies, they do it on legal basis. And the Bible says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That's where we talk of covenants and curses and yokes that cast spells over people's minds. Control their mindset. You must cast those demons. You must cast those devils. And if you think there is no spirit to cast out, you are joking. You are joking big time. There are wicked spirits that lead and become strongholds. So every time God wants to step into your life, they build fortifications. They have kept families poor. They have kept many people downcast. You must break their legal hold. It's not enough to cast out devils. That which gives them a legitimate ground on your life must be dealt with. And the blood is the mystery that solves that. Because the blood is a price in the spirit. The highest price. The price that can open any door. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Are we getting blessed tonight? We are getting into the heart of the matter now. Please let me have your attention. Let my life be the temple of the Spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer a sacrifice of praise so feel this temple Lord with your spirit once again the Bible says in whom the God of this world are you saying that there are spirits involved blinded their minds. He did something. It's an enchantment over your mind. It's a spell that controls your mind. No matter what you are told. And that's what authorizes demons. You sleep in the night and there are all kinds of spirits coming to molest you. You go on prayer and fasting and in the middle of the prayer and fasting is still happening. There is a legal hope. It's not just in Jesus' name go. I'm telling you, listen to me. Oh yes. Whenever something good is about coming into your life, a man or a woman or a snake or a serpent or something, these are mysteries in the spirit. Demons don't find pleasure in anything. They, it's, 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 a, it's a mystery, it's a code in the spirit that activates the operation of failure. Some of you, is during exam, certain strange things happen to you. Enchantment. 
mindsets that have been blinded by demonic activities. And you want to rise. Every time you want to rise, all they need to do is touch those codes and it brings you back. You want to stop the clubbing. You want to stop all of those things. The day you make that determination, a strange mystery happens in your life and it reduces you back. You are in a dirty relationship that is ungodly. You pray and you make a vow and say, I'm going to send a text to this brother and say, enough is enough. I'm ready to move forward. And these mysteries are activated again. And you who said you will stop, you will now call him and carry your two legs and go to his house. But mindset. He said, in whom the God. And to make matters worse, you truly have a stronghold when they are talking to you and you do not even see the need for change. Have you seen people like that? That's the classic example. There are people that can be sitting. You are talking to them and to you it's supposed to be very clear that this rubbish they are doing is not taking them anywhere. And they look at you. When you finish, they just laugh. There are people like that. They will escort you for Koinonia and come and leave you here. They say to her, Ross, tomorrow now, it will be. And they turn back and you are wondering. And powerful worship is going on. In whom the God of this world, the God of this system has what? Blinded their minds. It's like a, it's not just blinded like, um, it's a spell. That's why some of our parents, can be doing the things they are doing. Mindset. God will bless them. They will carry the money and be giving the children of rich people and you are dying in your house. Not even a wrapper for your mother. They've not paid your school fees. And when you talk to them, they don't even see the need to change. They say, I know what I'm doing. The God of this world has blinded their minds. You must cast out the demons that fortify this mindset and make them strongholds. Number three, when that happens, then you engage in what the Bible calls the renewal of the mind. The renewal of the mind is useless until there is faith and admittance until the spirits that are responsible for holding this mindset are casted out. Then you are now released. Now look up, please. This is the problem with many deliverance ministries in Nigeria. Listen to me. You think God is calling you into the deliverance ministry? Just listen to me before you add to this confusion that we have in this country. Many people fulfill the first condition. Yes, I think something is wrong. Something is moving in my body. Huh? Or I have repeated cycle of failure. Now you go to a man of God. Step one. Step two, you believe the demons are casted out. But number three, there is no renewal. And the Bible tells us the mystery of demonic operations. When a spirit leaves a man, huh, it goes through arid regions, dry places, seeking for a place of habitation, and not finding any. This is what the demon will tell the man. He said, I will arise and go back to my house. He's still calling the man his house. And then he returns back and the Bible says he finds the place swept, clean, but empty. Swept, clean, but empty. And when the demon sees that he's still the old mindset that is there, he now gathers seven other demons greater than itself and says, let's build a fortification. And you find out that the man's latter state is even worse. That's why you can see that a man can be delivered. Two months, he may get some level of breakthrough. And after three or four months, he gets back, not even square one, square zero. And then we keep blaming a lot of men of God and saying, that, that means that Mama. My man is not genuine. That deliverance is not true. We have a responsibility. The renewing of your mind. What does it mean to renew your mind? It means to passionately pursue. To know God's perspective about life. 
To renew your mind means to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed by the word of God. I take it again. The renewal of the mind means to passionately seek to know God's perspective about life. That's what I call wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything. And then to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed in the word of God. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world. The Greek word is aeon. The thinking pattern, the mindset that comes with this system. There is an ideology that comes with this system. It said, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. You're not there yet? By the renewing of your mind. It said that ye may prove that which is um, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. So how do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. That means there are things I've been doing that is probably keeping me poor. I've not been tithing. I've not been giving. I walk in a life of selfishness and materialism and self-centeredness. All of a sudden, the spirits and demons of poverty have leached through that mindset and created a stronghold out of it. Now I come and I make up my mind to want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. And when I'm delivered from the operation of those demons, then I now begin to adopt heaven's ideology. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And so on and so forth. And then... The moment there is that renewal, Satan comes and he cannot find his doorway to your life again. At that point, your liberty becomes permanent. Deliverance is never complete until it is backed up by a process of transformation. That's why people, people who get delivered and are not channeled to sit under a heavy teaching anointing where the principles of the kingdom are taught will go back, I guarantee you, back into what they were delivered from. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you. Let this mindset, permit this mindset to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. When Jesus walked the earth, he had a mindset. There was a mindset that made the waves and the, and the seas obey him. There was a mindset that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living in him. There was a mindset that made his enemies not to be able to resist nor to say his words. There was a mindset that helped, that made him to fulfill his assignment. And the Bible says, let this mind, permit it to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And the instrument to get that, that mindset into you is the Word of God. The Word of God accurately taught and accurately explained. Number four. How to pull down strongholds. Number four. You need to take steps and make new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. You need to now take steps and start making new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. Your life became a disaster because you were taking steps based on a mindset that was ungodly. Now that you have paid the price to adopt a new mindset, start taking steps based on that new mindset. And you find out that your life will start changing. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are 
through whatsoever things are pure. Hallelujah. It begins to list certain things and it tells you think on these things. Let your mindset say finally brethren whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Allow these things to frame your mindset so that your decision will now become true, honest, just, pure decisions. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 2. We looked at that, but let's look at it again. I announce to somebody tonight that the devil is a liar over your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. Please read together. I want to read. The apostle is speaking. He said, fulfill my joy that ye be like-minded. There is a mindset that I propose to you. This is my admonishment. Please be like-minded. Don't have a different mindset. There is a, a mindset that made the Holy Spirit work mightily in me. He said, be like-minded. Be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Brothers and sisters, your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset. Your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset. The quality of your home is at the mercy of your mindset. The excellency of your spiritual life is at the mercy of your mindset. The quality of your finance or your level of finance is at the mercy of your mindset. Your level of greatness in life, among other factors, is at the mercy of your mindset. He leads me and guides me to the city of a he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Listen, God wants to take you far. But are you ready to hold on to his hands tonight? And say, Lord, if it means me dropping certain devilish aspects of culture, it drops tonight. If it means me dropping certain aspects of my past, it will drop tonight. Listen, let me tell you something about your past. If your past does not inspire you, dump it. Dump it. Dump it. There is no reason to meditate and think about a past. I don't care what you have done. If your past does not inspire you, pack it up this night and throw it out of your life. Oh, holy God, I know you will not fail. God is concerned, you can count on Him. God is dependable. God is reliable. His part of the equation is guaranteed. But the question is, are you ready to hold on to His hand? There are many of you that need to leave the hands of culture tonight. 
There are many of us that need to leave the hands of family background and association. Listen to me. Love is a command. Association is not. If you need to pack up from some devilish associations that will not take you to the place of destiny, I don't care how long they have been your friends. Separate from them. Abraham had to leave the servants because he was going to climb a mountain. Do you realize that there is a place in destiny? God is dependable. God is reliable. Are you not tired of that habit? You have prayed and prayed and prayed. It's not just the issue of prayer. It's the issue of alignment. Alignment. Your anger has destroyed too many opportunities in your life. It's time to think about it. Your self-centeredness has destroyed too many open doors. Your hatred and resentment is a stronghold. Your affinity for immorality has wrecked more havoc in your life than you can imagine. But tonight, before we talk about demons, are you prepared? My job tonight is to bring you to a point where you see the need to embrace a new ideology. A little boy born in the States called Gray Farah is now a motivational speaker, multi-millionaire. At a very young age, was born by an African American. Could not amount to anything. The family was poor. The gentleman was poor. But he made a decision to break status quo. And he started painting stones very tender age he started painting stones and giving people to cover to put on their books and people were laughing at him he went from door to door because he knew that he had a prophetic destiny to bring his family out of the financial misery hallelujah eventually at age 12 that young boy became a multi-millionaire at age 14, he was sitting on the board of over 10 companies. At age 20, he was given two honorary PhDs. He's 29 right now. And he's one of the most influential black millionaires in America. Men who decided to cooperate with destiny. Listen. No matter what is happening in your life, you are not the first to go through it. You can't sit down and keep regretting. Forget about what has happened. The Bible says, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Some of us have meditated too much about yesterday. God gave you the gift of today and tomorrow to remedy the mistakes of yesterday. Every time you wake up to a new day, it's God's gift to you that there is still hope for your life. We used to sing a song. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you. The relationship failed since last year. But till now, you have not moved forward. You've used one year to regret. Whereas you would have gotten married, you would have even been pregnant now. One year to regret. And the person that messed up your life has settled down. He's even born again now. Maybe he's a pastor. And you are dead dying. Listen. Two wrongs don't make it right. It doesn't matter what has happened. Retrace your steps now. Some of you played around with certain opportunities that God gave you. Accept tonight that it was because there was a mindset. Allow the Lord to adjust it and be ready to move forward. The Lord is going to be doing great things next week. But it's not enough. There are many of us We've been coming for miracle service after miracle service. But every time the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, there is a stronghold.
that frustrates his activity in your life. So it looks like your situation is so difficult, God cannot break through. It's not true. We have three prayer points tonight. The first prayer point is, is a cry before God. Truly, I trust that God will grant us grace to admit tonight and take responsibility for the way our lives have been. For those of us who are experts at blaming people, forget about it. Take responsibility. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides Come on, join us if you can sing. To the place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me this song is a prophetic song. Listen, as you raise this song, I'd like you to wave goodbye to the past. We are going to start by dealing with the past. I don't care what went right or wrong. 2013, 2000 and whatever is gone. As you raise this song, I'd like you to announce to your destiny that you are still coming. So the Lord is me, yet will I praise Him. Hallelujah. We are going to sing this song and I'd like you to sing it from the depths of your heart. That is leading you. He leads me and guides me to the peace of a God. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads Go ahead. Goodbye to the failures of yesterday. Something happened to him. He did not sit down regretting and crying. He turned and he knew that he had a great destiny. When Stephen was being martyred, Paul, Saul then was seated and they placed their garments close to him. There was an idol worshiper called Abraham. Hallelujah. And he belonged to a land called all of the Chaldeans. He was an idol worshiper. His father had taught him idol worship. Listen, listen to me. Do you realize that Abraham was not supposed to be the father of faith? That prophetic destiny belonged to his father. Read your Bible. His father failed and he refused to align himself. And God called Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, the first person God called was his father. And then God called him and said, Abraham, he said, come out. That's our first prayer point. Come out of your father's house. Come out of every failure. Come out of every regret. You will never be able to open up yourself for new things when you're still seeking to regret the past. 
Now I'd like you to lift your voice and I'd like you to prophesy and say the past is gone. The past is gone. The past is gone. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead, pray. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the failures that are behind. Please pray. Say it about I am also not a man. He lives in the city of a God. He lives in the city of a God. He lives in the city of Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. The next prayer point is a prayer point of sincere humility and brokenness. To say, Lord, I take responsibility. Something about my mindset authorized the devil into my life. And I take responsibility and I ask for mercy tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Cry out for mercy. There's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Go ahead and pray. Please pray inside and outside. This is for your destiny. Pray. Pray. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Lord, I ask for mercy. There is a mindset my family has. Authorized witchcraft that has authorized limitations. That is a mindset I have that has made me a recorded failure. Tonight, I take responsibility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. You can't keep being afraid of your destiny. There is a strategy. There is an assurance. I believe, I believe, I your beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. From the side.
The next prayer point is going to be very strategic. Because some of you will be delivered here right now. Hallelujah. You're going to command every devil and every spirit that has had access to leech onto your mindset and authorize hell. You are going to pray and say in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus, I command your hold over my mind to be lifted. Lift up your voice and pray. Come on, pray, Koinonia. Stronghold. We command spirit. We command forces. We command demons and devils. Demon spirit. Demon spirit. That are irresponsible. Demon spirit. That are irresponsible. Demon spirit. That are irresponsible. For some time. Pray. He must let you go tonight. Come on, pray. I no longer need you in my life. Spirit responsible for crystallizing my spirit and God they made my family poor. They made failures out of my family. No way. I arise to change. I arise to change things. Lift up your head as I challenge those devils of darkness. They must let you go. There are spirits that have held on. I tell you, I see a lot of it as I stand on stage here. But they must go right now. The time is up. It's a new season. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, I decree and I declare that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been a victim of demonic forces, spells, yokes, that have crystallized thought patterns that authorize Satan in your life. In the name of Jesus, and at the count of three, let the fire man take it out. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost visit such a one, and that those spirits must go. I invoke it in the realm of the spirit. Right now, at the count of three, I like you to shout that name that is above all names. Listen. Listen. I'm already seeing in the spirit there will be dramatic deliverances right now. Dramatic. Some of you, you will feel fire from your hands and your head. Fire. Literally. Literally. It must give way right now. Are you ready now? At the count of three, I invoke the powers of the heavens. And I decree and I declare that every spirit that is responsible for wrong thought patterns at the count of three may it live your life now are you ready one two three i command those devils out 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 i command foul spirits 
from foot to face. Inside and outside, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let no spirit stand this fire. Let no devil stand this fire. Let no enchantment. I provoke that in the name of Jesus, every enchantment, every mystery that is responsible for casting spells and invocation over your mind to trap you in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God land upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time. There is no hiding. I'd like you to lay your hands on your head. That's the instruction the Lord gives me. I tell you something will happen to some of you right now that will surprise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let those hands on your head become hands of fire. And I declare that every power, every power that is resting upon your mind and destiny, as you shout that name Jesus, let that fire bring freedom to you right now. Are you ready? One, two, three. I break courses. I break courses. I break courses. I break chinks. I command spells. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Every altar, I don't care where it is, whether in your village, wherever, that is servicing any enchantment, any altar, Makoto Parate, Dekete Prokota, that has taken any sacrifice. That puts you in bondage right now. At the count of three, I command those altars to fall into pieces and that you be released. One, two, three, be free now. I command those altars. They burn with fire. They burn with fire. Oh, you must be free tonight. You must be free. It's time to rise to a new season. Hallelujah. Strongholds that keep mighty men to remain weak in life. Strongholds. You would have gone to school for years, but it made sure you never passed down. It works for everybody until it comes to your turn. Then you make a foolish decision. You don't even know why you said what you said. And it closes the door to you. We are going to sing this song. I see a river flowing in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit. Fresh water. And I believe that this is bringing freshness to many people. Thou, O oh Lord, as a shield for me. Give it your best. As we sing that song, prophesy it as your song of exodus. Out of certain nonsense. He said, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. He said, and I shall be anointed. Let me tell you something. If you are not tired of failure in your life, you can go. 
but for as many who are saying, Lord, this is it. I am sick and tired. This year must not finish with my life like this. I'd like you to sing this song from the depths of your heart. That will, Lord, have a shield for me. tonight is that you, O oh Lord, but thou, oh Lord, are a shield for me. You're my glory. 